in need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. In the jungle, the quiet jungle, the light sleeps tonight. Morning! How are you? Welcome to Sewing Street. Oh, I'm getting a bit snug already. Um, how are you? Welcome to Wednesday Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. It's wonderful to have your company today. Um, feeling, I'm feeling good about myself today. I'll tell you why soon. <laughs> We've got a great morning, a packed morning for you, um, including our early bird special. But we'll get to that in a minute. What are you up to today? Are you staying with us all morning? I hope you will. Um, it's the wind outside, the gale, is, it's absolutely blowing a hooli, isn't it? Um, the, door, the outside door here has been blowing open and shut all morning. It's absolutely horrible out there. But inside, it's warm and snug. We're absolutely surrounded by lovely things. We've got a fantastic guest, Wendy Orlando, who's going to be with me um, for three hours this morning. So we've got loads of lovely demos, loads of fantastic products and brand new fabrics to share with you. Um, a lovely new quilt as well, some great demos. So stick around, enjoy. Um, and of course, let's start with the early bird. I just, oh. sorry, I thought you were going to grab that and then I could have just carried on breathing. So, our early bird, that's better. You might disagree. Um, our early bird today is this fabulous faux tiger um, uh, fabric, which is Fabulous, look at this. I'm just gonna stretch it out. It is super wide, it is really rich. 
I mean, I was just, you know, I was trying to give you a little suggestion there at the start as to how you might use it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether my demonstration has actually helped at all. But I don't know, maybe it is an incentive. Who knows? This is a short pile faux fur. It's 100% acrylic. It's beautifully multi-tonal. Yeah, you've got a polyester backing to it, like a knit. It's a little bit of stretch. I quite like the backing, actually. Yeah, I like that. I think that's rather smart. It's going to be cut off the bolt for you, so you can multi-buy on this. Maybe order two units, three units, and then you'll get a metre, a metre and a half, all as one piece. Uh, of course, I was sort of showing you a suggestion there that you might use it as a fancy dress. Um, I always like a bit of fancy dress. I'm, I don't mind who knows that. I like a bit of dress up for a party or a dinner or something like that. Um, Halloween, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, bit of dress up. I like a, I like a, a, a fancy dress New Year's Eve party. Um, but equally, this is also really cool for things like home decor, um, you know, faux fur, has been and will be, always will be, uh, you know, a hot trend, um, lovely for things like a throw. Now, for a throw, of course, what you would want to do is either a rectangle or a square of this faux, uh, faux fur fabric. I would certainly back it and I would just bag it out. So I would do, you know, fabric on top, uh, just a plain cotton or a print cotton, sew all around the outside edge, maybe a half inch seam allowance, leave a gap of maybe six or eight inches, clip your corners, turn it through and hand stitch that uh, opening up. Really nice. We've had a message from Collector. I have this on my bed. I couldn't find my tabby cat the other day, camouflaged by it. Fabulous. Love that. Yeah, absolutely. Where are they gone? <laughs> but also, you know, you could make this as cushions as well. This would work really well for cushions. Um, uh, they would be really smart. I like a little faux fur cushion. You could easily get two cushions out of that for sure, easily. Now, our normal price is $5.99 for a half metre, but not today. Not today. It's our early bird special. It's $3.99 for half a metre, but only until midnight tonight. Now, of course, we could also use this fabric to create a fabulous soft toy. Um, it would be really, really good for a soft toy. Uh, you could, of course, make a tiger. You could make, um, you know, like a, you could do a, a, a cushion just a square rectangular cushion and then just applique some features, you know, eyes, nose, whiskers, something like that would be fun as well. You could also use this to create things like, um, yeah, draft excluder, that would be fun. That would be fun. Um, all sorts of things you can do. You can also make bags using faux fur fabric. I mean, I think it's, it's, um, it's fun and playful, isn't it? A fun and playful look. But I could definitely imagine something like, you know, like a kind of rectangular, just like a little rectangular bag kind of thing, shoulder strap. Yeah, for going to college or something like that. It's on trend, isn't it? I mean, faux fur is kind of almost always on trend, isn't it? In one form or another, it's a look that keeps on coming back um i've uh, got some nice little messages let me just read through quickly good morning Stuart and team love you from blackpool patricia thank you lots of love to you as well donna says morning Stuart and everyone morning uh good morning Stuart. it's too cold outside so i'm stopping inside watching you and doing my knitting laverne i don't blame you uh, what about a lovely lap blanket made out of tiger faux fur you could even put something like like a fleece or a minky on the back or even double up. I mean, at £3.99 for a half a metre, you could definitely do the same fabric front and back. And then it is super snuggly. What a great blankie for like cuddling down on the sofa with the grandkids. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, Dolce and Gabbana. Look at that at 964 pounds that's on sale okay oh that's all right then i'll buy it 
I mean, if it was full price, wowza. Well, there you go. Look, a tote bag. And I'm, I must admit, I'm absolutely sold on the faux leather or leather bag handles that you can buy. I mean, they add such a professional look to the simplest of bag. Really elevate it. That's fat. Well, I, I like that. Um, now then, who else? Maura, good morning, Stuart, Wendy and crew. Thought I had tuned into Tarzan for a moment. <laughs> Yes, beating my chest. Suzanne says, good morning, Stuart. Enjoying my day off. Have a great show. Thank you and have a great day off. Lucky you. Lovely. Uh, Jill says, morning from a wet and windy Tewkesbury. Jill, I'm from Tewkesbury originally. That was my hometown. It's where I grew up. Tewkesbury Abbey and the Abbey Mill. Tewkesbury's lovely. Tewkesbury's lovely. Not when it's windy and cold. It does flood quite a lot, um, you know, but it always did. It always did. This is gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, and it is really snuggly. It's very, very soft. I think things like blankets, throws, a lap, you know, blanket would be lovely. So nice, snuggly pillows and cushions as well. It's great for bags. We've just established Dolce & Gabbana are doing it. Lots and lots of high-end shops are using faux fur. And of course, let's not forget that it's perfect for dressmaking as well. You know, a jacket, a coatigan, that kind of coatigan, or a, or a um, what's the shirt version? A jacket. A shacket or a coat again. <laughs> we just make words up, don't we? <laughs> if you can't think of a word, make one up. Um, but, and of course, you know, I was, I was fooling around at the start, which is what I enjoy doing most of all. But, I mean, absolutely, what about a little bit of... <laughs> you can have that one. Can have that one on me. You're welcome. And I mean, look, you know, half a metre is enough to create um, a costume for me, although I certainly wouldn't want to turn around <laughs> if I was wearing it. Now, on Debenhams at the moment, you can go online and you can get yourself a faux fur jacket for £83.40. Now, that's discounted from 139. I reckon if you wanted to make a jacket, you'd probably be looking at about two and a half to, let's say three metres. Let's just say three metres, so six units, 24 pound, yeah, 23.94, lining and thread. So, you know, Lots and lots of options. Don't forget to check out your faux tiger fur fabric. Now, remember, we've got a really special promotion at the moment. We're on the 12, the first 12 days of December, that run up to Christmas. It's our version of the 12 days of Christmas. Today is day eight. And let me tell you what we've got for some lucky winner, one lucky winner today. If you shop today, you could win all of the studio makes that you see hanging behind me. Not some of them, but all of them. So you've got that fabulous medallion quilt top, ready to layer and quilt. You've got that beautiful Alison Glass quilt. That's all quilted, bound, everything. You've got the lovely circular Alison Glass cushion up the top with the flying geese that was made by Wendy Orlando. You've got a couple of gorgeous... Um, brushed cotton flannel pillows, really lovely for Christmas. And you've got Delphine's Union flag uh, cow. So you'd win all of those for one person today for shopping, anything at all. You know, we make probably two things every day on Sewing Street. We have lots of lovely projects in our offices. We just thought it would be a fun thing to give away. So that is the prize for one lucky person today for shopping. But also absolutely anybody that shops today, um, if you shop six days out of the 12, in the first 12 days uh, running up to Christmas, then you'll get a free postage and packing for the whole of January. 
So you might have already shopped for two days. If you shop for the next four, you'll get free PMP for the whole of January. Now, yesterday we worked it out, and if that actually works out, I think we said £72. If you shop every single day in January, that would save you £72. But even if you shop once or twice, I love a saving. Any savings, always worth having, isn't it? Now, let's do the menu and see what we've got coming up today on Sewing Street. Now, at 8 o'clock, we're starting off with fabulous fabrics, and we've got the most gorgeous launch of a brand new range from Lewis and Irene. Now, at 9 a.m., we've got Wendy Orlando here with her owl doorstop. It is super cute. I know you're going to love it. Now, at 10, we've got Quilts and Kits Showcase, so a lovely roundup of all sorts of really inspiring projects. At 11, Wendy is back with a winter nap quilt. This is so beautiful. When she showed us the sample, we just all fell in love with it. Here it is. How gorgeous is that? Look at that ombre border. It's really beautiful. This would be suitable for making as a quilt as you go project. You can quilt it as a whole project. You get loads of lovely fabrics. It's really rich, warm, cozy. We just love it. And it's more Lewis and Irene. We love Lewis and Irene here. Really beautiful. Really, really lovely fabric that. And then at 12 o'clock, we've got Yarn Lane, uh, Block of the Month and Kits, again with Wendy Orlando. So a really packed morning. I hope you'll stay with us. Now, we're going to start today with some wonderful Lewis and Irene fabric. Now, we've got a whole new collection. We've got the whole collection. It is brand new. It is called Wintertide. And it's designed by the team at Lewis and Irene. They're wonderful guys. I love the guys at Lewis and Irene. Had some really fun times with them in the summer at Festival of Quilts. And also heard their story of how the company had been formed, how it was a real kind of like family and friends thing and named after grandparents, Lewis and Irene. Such a sweet story. Um, Lewis and Irene are really, really inspired by nature and a lot of their fabrics feature really beautiful, very, very beautifully rendered sort of natural elements, leaves, flowers, birds, animals, just done in the most beautiful way. This collection has been inspired by the arts and crafts movement. So I think if you love the arts and crafts style, if you love William Morris, if you love Liberty, any of those kind of small florals, you're going to absolutely love this collection. Now then, we've got the whole collection to start with. Going to split this into two, and we've done you a very special saving of thirteen ninety eight, which means effectively these two half meters you're getting for free. Okay, so you're getting a whole meter of fabric in this pack for free. Now it's a fifteen piece collection. You're getting seven and a half meters in total, but remember you only pay for six and a half meters. It's ninety pounds and 87 pence. It's such a gorgeous collection. It's called Wintertide. Um, but I want to say from the outset, there is nothing in the designs here that tie this to winter. Okay. There are no issue, uh, no um, motifs. You know, there's no snowflakes in there. There's no kind of wintry stags or holly or anything like that. It just, I think, Wintertide, it's got this wonderfully kind of rich, cosy, opulent look, but this would work any time of year. And what I particularly love about this collection is it's got gold accents, but it's also got, and this is more unusual, bronze metallic accents. So this is absolutely stunning. Let's have a look at the individual fabric, shall we? So lovely. Now, are all these fabrics available individually as well? Yeah, all in available individually. So, should we go through them one at a time? Or just the whole collection? We'll do one by one. Okay, great. So this one is IB49. Now, 6 99 for a half metre is an amazing fabric for designer fabric, isn't it? 
anyway. You've got these beautiful, beautiful coral tones. So you've got a really nice soft coral in the background and then deeper coral, uh, almost like a sort of chocolate brown here. And then you've got this wonderful dark teal, a little bit of burnt orange. And then do you see the berries are actually printed in gold metallic? So they've got that little bit of shimmer. Now that gold is beautifully done. This isn't going to rub off, wash off, wear off. It's going to really stand the test of time. It is really beautiful print that. It's quilt weight cotton, of course. So 100% cotton, between 42, 44 inches in width. OK, so you can buy that one individually. Let me go on to this next one. Now, I was talking about that kind of opulence, richness. This one, IH61, this has uh, a gorgeous design of peacocks. And this is where you've got that sort of influence from the arts and crafts movement, haven't you? You've got that symmetry, for one thing, that gorgeous symmetry. Uh, which is so beautiful. You've got bronze metallic detailing here on the feathers, on the flowers, on the, um, I don't know, are these would be feathers, I suppose, on the top of a peacock's head. Really lovely. And again, you've got really rich blues and teals, uh, deep oranges, and that lovely, very soft. I, it's, a, it's a tricky one to, to put a finger on this background. I would say, I want to say puce, yeah? It's a funny one, isn't it, puce? It's not a colour that's often talked about and it doesn't sound very nice, but it is absolutely beautiful. It's that kind of greyish, beigeish, lilac background, but it's very, very pretty. This one's got bronze metallic all through the feathers, the uh, flowers here. Absolutely super that. This would be gorgeous, wouldn't it, for creating things like um, covered boxes, sewing boxes and trinket boxes, things like that. Really lovely for bag making as well. This one's SE59. This again has got a lovely um, art, art nouveau almost feel to it. It's got these lovely sort of sinuous, graceful vines, these stylized flowers and these little pears and these are bronze metallic here with the most gorgeous soft teal background. You've got that really lovely little bit of shimmer there. I don't know if you can just, can you see that? It's really subtle but beautiful. It just adds that little bit of extra opulence, doesn't it? I mean this would be absolutely lovely for a wintry quilt but one that would work all year round and I think particularly if you love that arts and crafts look if you've got sort of dark wooden furniture if you've got maybe carved furniture things like that this would work really well in a bedroom but also if you've got something that's kind of fresher more modern kind of white painted furniture or light wood something like that this would look equally good I think that would be where I would be picking different coordinates or a different background fabric to go with it. So if you want to lighten, freshen the whole look, then go for things like ivories and light tan or pale gold or, you know, that kind of fresh look. If you want to emphasise that kind of darker, richer, sort of more arts and crafts look, then go with darker colours, so deeper blues and cobalt and maybe even like a deep rusty orange or chocolate brown would also look really fantastic. Now this next one is absolutely fabulous. I love orange fabrics and this one is covered in little golden pears. I mean that is just so pretty. Little deeper tone. Yeah, I guess, you know, if you were to say winter tight, Christmassy, I guess the pears, I don't know. Pears ripen in autumn. It's a partridge in a pear tree, I guess, but there's no partridge. You know, and when you think about if this was, you know, a little, uh, you know, the points on a 
a star, an Ohio star or something like that, you know, it, what you're going to see is this gorgeous, rich orange fabric with this gorgeous gold highlight in it. And that's, and that's just stunning, lovely. Now, next one, this is a really pretty, and this actually could um, dictate your, your kind of background colour. This would be a lovely neutral background colour as well. This one's RW84. A really soft antique rose pink. This would be lovely for dressmaking, wouldn't it? Really pretty. I think like little girls' pyjamas with a bit of broderie anglais. Mmm yeah really pretty you've got that sort of look in the flowers too little vine very soft and gentle it would also make really kind of just lovely subtle sashings borders around blocks just something really pretty soft and delicate it's wonderful here on Sewing Street, isn't it? Because every day is different. Yesterday was all about the vibrancy, the brightness, the intense colour of K-Facet. Today, we've got this wonderful sort of opulent but subtle, much smaller print from Lewis and Irene. You know, it really goes to show we cover all the bases here at Sewing Street. Now... I love everything. <laughs> I just love it all. I love it all. You know, I mean, it really depends. I don't know about you, but it really depends on the day, my mood, the time of year, how I'm feeling, you know, what lights my fire. Um, but I can really see the beauty in this fabric range. Now, this is a different colourway of the peacock print again really beautifully rich and opulent but also it's not a loud shouty fabric um, but it, there's so much beautiful detail in it this has got gold printing on it this time in the feathers of the peacock in their little head plumes and in the flowers here and then this gorgeous coral and orange, a beautiful, beautiful shade of sort of teal green and a little bit of blue in there as well. It's very, very pretty. And because you've got a sort of nice motif there and it's a nice symmetrical motif, if you're into um, English paper piecing, I'm thinking diamonds here, can you imagine? Or almost like a sort of teardrop, kind of this sort of diamond shape would be amazing. You probably get six of those spun together in a star. Just glorious. But then I would want to applique that on something like sort of this sort of background. So it really popped. Really popped. Uh, it's a gorgeous colour palette, isn't it? It's something a little bit different. It's got that wonderful richness from the blues, the corals, the teal but still really easy to live with because actually that really soft coral is such a pretty bedroom colour or a really lovely calm sitting room colour or, you know, so you can, you can take, or the ivory or the cream, you can take those colours. Um, here we've got the pear print, this time done on a navy background. This is EQ94, bronze pears absolutely delicious and again half a meter is only 6.99 it's a fantastic price now don't forget if you want the entire bundle you're saving 13 pounds <coughs> excuse me 13 pounds and 98 pence yeah so you're getting a whole meter of fabric for free within those seven and a half metres. You're only paying for six and a half metres. It's brill, it's brand new. It's Winter Tide by Lewis and Irene, one of our best loved fabric companies. And you know, Lewis and Irene, I, I was talking with, with the guys from Lewis and Irene at Festival of Quilts. What I really loved about Lewis and Irene was they suddenly arrived, but they hit the ground running. They hit the ground fully formed, as soon as I saw the first Lewis and Irene collection, I felt like I already knew the company. 
I already this was established because they really really know what they're doing don't they they just do fabrics which have this wonderful appeal their fabrics are easy to fall in love with this is a pretty one this is gorgeous this is fu96 and this is that gorgeous uh, navy it's not a sort of black navy you know what i mean that's so so dark it's still got that blueness to it that you can quite easily see um this would be absolutely gorgeous for making up into a bag i just i'm slightly jumping ahead here but i just wanted to grab a bit of this is a bit of gold pu that we've got i'm just thinking about about a bag here with a PU base and fabric upper and then some nice PU smart handles. That would be really gorgeous, wouldn't it? Or keep it navy and go with the navy PU. Or how about if we really want to mix it up, what about picking out that soft pink? Oh, now that might be my favorite. We've got all of these PUs on the show. Um, hop on the website and, and, and pre-order. All of these PUs are fab for bag making. And you don't even need to use a leather needle. Just a sharp machine needle. Um, you know, a universal's fine. But um, my favourite are Microtex. They're a really nice, slim, sharp point. They'll pierce that no problem. You don't need to use special needles, you know, like a um, leather needle. You don't need to use special thread either. You're a normal, regular, sew-all or polyester thread. Absolutely perfect for that. Uh, really lovely. I'm loving this fabric. It'd be so much fun to work with. Bronze again, picking out those pairs. And again, if you wanted to sort of really kind of freshen that up and add some contrast, what about grabbing that orange pear print and teaming that? It's really super, isn't it? Now, remember, this is all being cut off the bolt for you if you go by the half meter. So if you want a meter and a half, you just by three units. If you're going for the whole collection, that would be my top tip, the whole collection, because it's all beautiful. <laughs> That's the main reason, it's all beautiful. Um, and it isn't a huge collection either. It's uh, 15 different fabrics. So it's not a huge collection, but it is a, a full collection. They've covered all of the bases and you're getting a whole meter of that fabric for free. We never normally do that, do we? Half a metre maybe, but this time a full metre for free. Now, we've got a few more fabrics to look through, through from the whole collection. And then I've also got some smaller bundles actually. We've split the collection into three lots of five. So if you want a smaller selection, you can absolutely do that. So uh, this one right here is SY73. Now, again, this has that lovely, it's a beautiful print, but it has that calmness and that softness and that gentleness. Beautiful little stylized flowers and berries here. And again, that is bronze. Those berries are printed with bronze. I think, I think that every single fabric, yeah, every single fabric in this collection has got either gold or bronze printing on it. Now, as someone who's worked in the fabric industry for a very long time, I can tell you that that metallic printing is an expensive process. It's an extra process and it is one which always carries with it extra cost to the retailer, the customer. This is still $6.99 for a half metre. This is That is the price for a, that is a, a really good price for a non-metallic um, I would expect one that had got those metallic elements to be in the 16 to 17 pounds a metre price range. This is lovely, isn't it? Again, this would be really lovely as a bag lining too. That would be a beautiful bag lining. You know, the prices are only going up, aren't they, for just about everything these days. Um, it's lovely that we can still bring you really good value here at Sewing Street. 
Um, and of course, these all would work beautifully with fabrics that we've already seen. So imagine putting a little bit of that dark navy there for a, sort of a lot of contrast. If you want a little less contrast, what about going for something like this a one? And you see, I couldn't resist, because this is me all over really, I couldn't resist just a little of this one. You see, just as a little sort of flange or something like that within a bag or within a cushion or in borders, something like that. Just have that little pop of colour. So many different options with this lovely range. And it's called Winter Tide, but it really is not tied to winter. Um, this is a, a range that would work all year round. And particularly if you love that... Uh, arts and crafts look that um oh, it's a beautiful movement isn't it and it influences so many designers of course based on a really a sort of reaction against the industrial revolution and the sort of mechanization of things and a, a wanting to go back to a simpler way of life, a less mechanised way of life, uh, you know, a way of life that was more about hand producing beautiful and functional things. Isn't that what we all do every day of our lives as crafters? We're making beautiful, functional, handcrafted things. So I think there's a wonderful synergy between the arts and crafts movement and us as sewers, makers, crafters. Now this is really, really pretty. This is, although this is one of the quietest prints, this is one of my favourites from the whole collection because I just see so much versatility in this fabric. It's got a beautiful gold print on the flowers. It's not shouty though, is it? I'm gonna just look, can you see? Those flowers are all, and it's so pretty, it's almost lacy, absolutely gorgeous. And then you've got that lovely soft teal leaf and vine, and then a really beautiful ivory background. S super, absolutely super. This one is a little bit sort of wedding-y for me. It's got a little bit of a sort of, you know, I could imagine lovely little accessories for a wedding being made out of this. Little bags for bridesmaids to carry. They have rose petals in them or just like sweeties. Oh, is that true? Oh, that's a sweet story. Cat was just saying, our producer Cat was saying that the petals strewn at weddings, one of the stories about where they come from, is that they're collected from flowers that have been given by the boy to the girl on the run up to the wedding. How sweet. See, it was always rice, wasn't it? It's always right. Well, actually, I, I tell a lie. When I was a child, it was that sort of multicolored confetti that you threw. And then if it was rainy or wet, all the color came out of it and ruined <laughs> everything that it touched. And used to get churches that would say no confetti. This one's FN58. Now this is a really beautiful, strong teal version of the same fabric. Dark backgrounds, really popular, really makes whatever you put on them or with them pop. And even if that be another dark fabric, so for example, something like that, how's that for a combination? I've saved the best till last. How fabulous is that? We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> that is really beautiful. Again, gold overprinting. You've got um, a deep teal background, lighter teal leaves, and then this little black vine. It's a really simple print. It's kind of low key. It's very pretty. Very pretty. 
And of course, what you need in a fabric collection is a variety of scales. You need these smaller scale prints to make the larger scale prints kind of pop and work. Smashing, and again, really nice for dressmaking. That would make such a pretty blouse or little top. It would be really sweet. Nice little dress as well. Yeah, lovely. Now then, here's that really fabulous print. This is PH56. This has been popular. Now this is, look at that. That is absolutely amazing. Um, copper or bronze uh, overprinting in the feathers, the flowers, the little top knots, and then this deep, rich navy background, beautiful kind of deep orangey red berries and flowers. There's even a tiny little bronze dot overprinted in the in the tip of each berry there. Now the picture on the website actually if you have a look at that shows you how the how it looks when the metallic hits the light. Look at that. How stunning is that? absolutely gorgeous it's, it's very very william morris isn't it it's very arts and crafts but for 6.99 just incredible um wouldn't that be amazing wouldn't that be amazing for english paper piecing or fussy cutting or i'm also thinking it would be amazing for stack and whack i'm still a big fan of stack and whack you get some amazing effects out of that this fabric, absolutely perfect because the repeat isn't massive, so you don't need masses of fabric to get your eight repeats for stack and whack. Um, but there is also so much going on and very little in the way of background fabric. So sometimes if you choose a, a, a large scale print for stack and whack, there'll be large background spaces as well that don't really have much going on. And you'll end up with some blocks that are a bit dull, a bit pointless and not really doing it for you. This has got everything everywhere. It is really stunning. Remember that full collection is £90.87. Um, you're getting seven and a half metres of fabric, the whole collection of 15 prints, but you're only paying for six and a half. Now then, this is um, one more version of the little pear print. So pretty this one, isn't it, with the pears. Uh, gold printing here as well. Little teal leaves. Ever so good, that really pretty. And again, would work so well as a background print to team with perhaps some of the more deeper, darker or busier prints so that you're, um, you know, having that contrast. How is the weather doing outside your window right now, by the way? I can hear the storm <laughs> outside. It is so powerful, you know? Our director Joe has just said, the weather outside is frightful. <laughs> Inside it's all delightful. I know how the story goes. This is LW04. This is lovely. Again, this is that sort of Art Nouveau look, isn't it? With the sinuous finds the symmetry. <laughs> yeah, let it sew, let it sew, let it sew. I did a back panel called that. <laughs> that is really lovely. Again, those little gold pears. What would you make with this? What would you do with that free metre of fabric? Again, all of these would work really well with the PU that we've got. You could mix and match this with other types of fabric, create a whole sofa full of lovely cushions. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, let me just... And again, I would be inclined, I would be inclined to pick out that coral just for that contrast. Now I like those little bright pops of colour, but if you wanted something that was more subtle, 
but still had a little bit of impact there. You could pick something like the um, soft, actually, actually, what about, actually, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm just wondering if this would be rather lovely to go with. If you wanted something softer, that would work really nicely. That's pretty. Or you could go with, that would also be really lovely if you imagine just a little bit of binding over the edge. It's just enough, isn't it? It's just enough just to lift the edge and define it without shouting. Now, this mega bundle is the only bundle that we're doing today that has got a special saving with it, um, which I think is really, really worth having. And I think this is a super, absolutely super beautiful range of fabrics. And I want it all. But we do have three smaller bundles. And I'm going to show you those bundles now. They're um, collections of five. So we've split the 15 fabrics into three lots of five. Let's start with this one, which is sort of really focuses in on the teals and blues here. So you're getting that lovely all over teal print with the little gold flowers. You're getting everybody's favourite, I think. This one with the bronze feathered peacocks. I'm hoping they're actually a real bird. Uh, you're getting the gorgeous little ivory pears. This gorgeous sort of Art Nouveau print with gold overprinting. And then this one as well, which, which we've just seen, which we also really love here in the studio, with little bronze overprinting on the berries. So that one, $34.95, you're getting two and a half metres of fabric which is a super selection, maybe mixed with <coughs> little solids, some batiks, some sort of low-key prints just to make everything stretch a little further. Now, this one is the kind of pinks corals. Very lovely, this. Um, two and a half metres of fabric here. Again, same price, $34.95. You've got that lovely all over coral, soft coral kind of leaf and flower print, little gold berries there. You've got the kind of puce, it's like a sort of, um, you know, cream end of rose pink uh, background, bronze over printing on the peacocks, really beautiful. That's a gorgeous symmetrical design, super for fussy cutting. You've got the blue Art Nouveau print. My favorite version of the pears, this is that gorgeous, deep, rich orange. There's nothing kind of bright and flashy about this orange. Even though it's very intense, it is a really gorgeous kind of um, subtle, not bright and garish yeah if that makes sense and then probably my favorite of this design this is so pretty that sweet soft coral pink so that's that selection and then our third selection kind of focuses in on the navies all right so you've got the palest background um, peacocks here still got all that lovely vibrant color and I think as well, this is one of those sort of stronger prints from the collection, really reflects the Art Nouveau, arts and crafts uh, influences there. Got that lovely peacock motif. The navy pairs, bronze pairs, which is just gorgeous, delish. We do j'adore. Uh, you, this is lovely. I think this is my favourite colourway in this design, this lovely sinuous but this would be all lovely as well for doing sort of um, kind of Art Nouveau inspired applique as well. There's a few nice books that, that cover that. Um, lovely overprint this, um, all overprint. And then that lovely kind of bridal-esque background, little golden flowers, soft teal vines and leaves. Very, very pretty. 
Now, you've seen the entire collection. What did you love the best? Now, if you want the entire bundle, which is absolutely the best value, because you've got that one metre saving, £13.98. Congratulations to everyone that's already checked out on that. They are beautiful fabrics and such a gorgeous colour palette. Very, very appealing, this. There's so much there to, I think, in inspire you. It's always good, I think, to have a gorgeous new project to dive into come the new year because you know what it's like as soon as Christmas is over everything's a bit flat and a bit sort of ho-hum you know you've done your Christmas makes you've done your seasonal you've gifted everything and now it's time for something for you and I think to have a really gorgeous quilt planned or bag projects planned out, ready for the new year, is something really inspiring and just help you beat those kind of winter blues. So I do find I, I get sort of, you know, sluggish in January. I need a good, beautiful project to kind of get stuck into and I can focus on this and I'm not looking through the window at how miserable it is outside. <laughs> Isn't that a lovely range? It's £90.87. pence. Thank you so much, Lewis and Irene, for producing such a gorgeous range. It's really inspiring. Now then, I did mention some PUs earlier on, didn't I? And I gave you a very quick glimpse of them. PUs are fantastic bag-making essential, really. Um, many, many reasons why this is a, a great fabric to use. Of course it has the look of leather without the cost, the difficulty of sewing and also um, of course this uh, doesn't involve um, the usual processes. This is a man-made fabric. Uh, you've got a wonderful consistency too. This is a gold. It's not, again, it's not a really flashy really shiny gold. This is quite a subtle gold. It's got a nice soft sheen to it. It's a fine textured faux leather. So it'd be really suitable for large or small projects. 30% viscose, 40% PU and 30% polyester. Now it's 140 centimetres wide, so it is extra wide, 6.99 for a half metre. You can multiply, of course, it will come in one single piece. Really suitable for bag making this. Of course, you can make the whole bag out of it, but as I was showing you earlier on, there are so many opportunities to combine some of the wonderful new winter tied fabrics from Lewis and Irene. What about a little bit of the teal and the gold together? Isn't that pretty? Or it might be about having the outside of the bag in the PU and then the lining and the pockets inside in a really beautiful contrast cotton fabric. So that's the gold. Absolutely lovely. Brilliant for this time of year, isn't it, as well, where you want just a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of bling. Now next up we'll do the navy. This is the navy PU. Same co um, composition as before, same width too. This is a real classic, isn't it? This needs to be in every bag maker's stash. And do think about your stash. You know, it's not always about your quilt weight cottons and things like that. It's also really good to have some bag making basics in your stash too. So some PU, some lining fabrics, some metalware, things like maybe some Bosel or some H640. I always like to keep these things in stock because, you know, when you've got that itch that needs scratching and it says, I need to make a bag today, right now, um, maybe you'll feel like going out shopping, maybe you won't. If you've got everything in your stash, you can just crack on and start making. 
<coughs> really soft as well, very easy to handle, nice and fluid. It's not stiff, it doesn't feel plasticky, and it's going to kind of bend and mould well. It doesn't have that overly shiny look either. It's a subtle sheen, um, which I just think is really classy. It's lovely. Now, this is a really sort of soft, not quite putty pink, but almost. It's almost a putty. Um, absolute perfect perfect match for look at that isn't that lovely so that's the pink PU yeah so as a color match absolutely brilliant now I wouldn't necessarily put those two together because it is too close but it's that pink so any of the prints in the Lewis Nyring collection that have got that pink in are going to go absolutely beautifully with the pink PU. But it would also just make the most wonderful handbag, shoulder bag, tote on its own as well. Right, one more thing I wanted to show you as well while we're here. Osnaberg, Osnaberg. We've got Osnaberg on the show. It's back. It's in stock, <laughs> £2.50 for a half a metre, and it's cut off the bolt. It's 100% seeded cotton, so it has that natural look to it. Um, it's got a little more texture and a little more weight to it than a calico. Really lovely. Of course, you can mix it with your quilt weight cottons as well. You can use it for linings, but it's also really popular for things like doll making. Um, very popular, especially for sort of country style dolls. It's 120 centimetres wide and you're getting half a metre for £2.50. You can buy it off the bolt, of course. If you want four metres, buy eight units and you'll, you'll get that in one piece. Now, it's also really, really good for things like backing table runners, placemats, wall hangings. You can back quilts with it, of course, as well. I would always pre-wash. I always pre-wash backing fabrics anyway, um, because a lot of fabrics which are woven for backings, they do have a different thread count. And this certainly will have a different thread count to um, finely woven quilt weight cottons that you can use on the top. So I would pre-wash that before you back anything with it. And then you'll be able to wash the whole item um, without worrying that one side's going to have slightly more shrinkage than the other. But absolutely brill. A really lovely fabric that got a great texture to it. It's always really popular every time we have it in stock, which is why we so often don't have it in stock because it is so, so popular. Um, a really good one that to stock up uh, in your stash. To be honest with you, at five pounds a metre, that would be a good choice as well for doing things like making twirls if you're a dressmaker. Remember, if you shop for six days out of the first 12 days of December and you will get a full month January of free P&P. <coughs> Total value of that is £72. Mm. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I remembered wrongly. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Sorry, Stuart, your arithmetic is wrong for the savings. Absolutely right. Uh, made for free P&P for January. If you order every day in January, 3.95 times 31 is £122.45. What a saving. You're right, Elizabeth. You should be here in the studio. My maths is terrible. Actually, I say my maths is terrible. It's more my memory. Um, I think it was Joe, our director yesterday, worked out the maths. And I think he did work it out as 122. But I forgot. <laughs> a message from... Ansalata, morning all loving your sh oh sorry morning all loving your shirt thank you thank you um, MS. loving the fabric again love to see you and your happy face oh that's really sweet thank you ever so much now question from Wendy hi Stuart can you iron the PU thanks Wendy you can steam our, our um our producer is, is telling me now, you can steam, hover the steam from a distance. Don't touch the iron actually on the fabric itself. Um, but the creases fall out. So 
what I would do personally is um, as soon as you get the PU home, take it out the packet, unwrap it and hang it up. You know, if you've got those um, uh, coat hangers that have the little clips on for trousers and skirts, things like that, and I would clip it on that and hang it up and then those creases will naturally fall and if there are any left um, just yeah just give it a sort of vertical steam perhaps from the back um, and just let those relax out when you're actually constructing your bags i would always use a seam roller rather than any kind of press or a clapper i would use a seam roller i don't think i've got one to hand but it's like they're usually made out of wood or plastic and they're a little roller that you just roll along the seam and that will flatten things out. Remember also, if you're making with PU, get yourself some uh, wonder clips to hold your seams together while you're sewing everything together. No pins, those, he uh, those holes don't heal up. Now then, we're going to go for a little break now and then after the break, I'm going to be welcoming Wendy Orlando here who has got some fab demonstrations to share, brand new projects. So stick around, you've just got time to grab yourself a cuppa. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. 
You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi there, everybody. How are you doing? It's Stuart Hillard here. Welcome back to Sewing Street. It is nine o'clock. It is Wednesday, December the 8th. Where does the time go? We have got a brand new, fabulous project, really appealing for all sewers from Wendy Orlando, our wonderful Wendy Orlando. Morning, Good Wendy. Good morning. How are you, darling? I'm fine, thank you. You caught Excellent. me mid prep then. I do no apologise. I'll don't carry worry. on. I'll just. Just wanted to say hi, oh. acknowledge you were here in the building. Wendy came in so windswept this morning. She's all glammed up now, of course, but <laughs> suffered in the in the blowy weather out there. Don't go out today. Stay with us. It's awful outside. Now, Wendy has brought a brand new, exclusive uh, new project. It's a panel with instructions. I think the most brilliant thing, apart from it's a wonderful project, is that with the instructions, you can go on to make as many doorstops as you like or turn them into soft toys. How cute! How cute. Now, that is in the dusky colourway, which is the most popular so far. I'm going to grab the dusky. That's this one, isn't it, with the little bit of gold in. Now, I'm going to open out the panel so you can see. What's fab is... The panel, rather than featuring like the individual elements, like the, the wings, the, the eyes, the, the feet and so on, it's actually sort of large pieces of fabric in different colours. So here are all those different, I mean, I just love that fabric selection anyway. I absolutely love it. Normally, I think what we would do is you'd have like the owl body, the owl back, the owl eyes and things like that that you would cut out. And once you've used your panel up, that's it. You can't make another. But what's Brill is, what Wendy's done, she's a giver. Wendy, you're a giver. Um, is that you can make your owl. You can actually if you patch fabric together, when you've cut out your first owl, if you patch your leftovers together, you'll get a second owl out of the pieces. And we actually love a bit of patchwork round oh, yes. here. I don't know if you've noticed. So that appeals to me on every level. Um, you've got all of those different elements. The price is amazing. So if you think about it, $16.99, you've got enough fabric on this panel with some you know, creative patching to make two. I mean, the one that we've shown actually, which is my favourite, this one, is the one that Wendy made out of the leftovers, isn't it? You patched those pieces together and made that one. It's my favourite out of all of the ones. And look at the character in the eyes. Wendy's used a decorative stitch on a machine to put almost like a little snowflake in the eyes. <coughs> it's absolutely adorable, so cute. Now, um, Wendy's instructions are really, really detailed. Really, really detailed. You've got loads of pictures. You've got really detailed instructions. Do you know, Wendy, I think this is the most detailed set of instructions I've seen. This is super. I like this very much as a teacher myself. Absolutely super. And then you've got all of the pieces that you need. This is, this is what's so special about this panel and set of instructions because we can use this time and time again. And I could make these owls and gift them to so many of my friends and family. I would use half a dozen of them in my house alone. The doors have to be kept open everywhere at home for Mrs Mills because Mrs Mills has got access all areas in my home, access all areas. Um, apart from during the night when she's confined to barracks, Wendy. 
Is Mrs. Mills a cat? Mrs. Mills okay. is a cat. She's not actually a neighbour who lives with us or my I mother. I did wonder. <laughs> Sorry, I just assume everyone knows. Because I would have the door closed if Mrs. Mills was staying, if it was yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Now the dusky colourway, it's 16.99. You get your full instructions and they are detailed full instructions. You also get your panel, which we reckon is enough to make two of these door stops, which is an amazing price. But then of course, you've got the option of delving into your stash, into your fat quarters, your leftovers from your quilt. What about making an owl door stop out of fabrics that match the decor of the bedroom? Yeah, maybe the quilt that you've made, you could use those pieces up. So that's dusky. Now, next up, we've got monochrome. Such a popular uh, version, this. Thank you, Elliot. Elliot's just brought me tea. What a doll. What a gem. What a prince among men. <laughs> uh, now, this is gorgeous because... You know, when we say monochrome or neutral, you know, the neutral of now is silver and grey, isn't it? It isn't beige and cream. I mean, beige and cream are very much what would work in my house. But for a lot of people, their neutral of choice is silver and grey. That's terrific. Makes up lovely too. Maybe when you do the eyes... You're going to do metallic thread. So I'm a, a, little, I'm a little thrown here. Elliot, come on. Oh, you want the iPad? It's just, it's just under here. Just say what you want. Elliot, just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Isn't that smashing? This is the monochrome. And again, what's lovely about this is we've got smashing, lovely, modern prints. Nice modern prints in there. And again, prints that once you've cut out your first owl as kind of whole pieces, then start patching again. Doesn't that look fab, the monochrome version? absolutely gorgeous you could of course as well delve into your stash grab a little bit of pink polka dot or a little bit of red spotty or something and do that heart wouldn't that be cute or even make a little three-dimensional padded heart and then slip stitch it to the wings mm -hmm. sorry wendy i'm stealing all the ideas no, like that you that. told me earlier <laughs> on that was wendy's idea that wasn't mine no, not stitch it to the wings have him holding oh, it that would be really cute too. i like yours as well I like your idea as well and then our third version of Wendy's brand new and exclusive design is called Rainbow. Well, you know what I'm going to say about this. It's my favourite colour. This looks bright and jolly. So this would be really fun for a child's room. It would be great to make and donate to your local school or nursery. That would be fun too. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is gorgeous. Look, a bit of rainbow there. Really nice. The wise owl guards the library door. Cat? <laughs> yes, thank you. That was that was Cat's idea, our producer. The wise owl guards the library door. I thought there was something on a fortune cookie then. He could do. Is there a deeper <laughs> meaning to this? <laughs> I shouldn't look for meaning in anything really, should I? But what a gorgeous array of, of different uh, colours there that could mix and match to create a rainbow owl. That would be a lot of fun. <clears throat> now remember, you're just paying sixteen ninety nine. And for that, you're getting your pattern and you're getting your panel. Now, bear in mind that normally our patterns, this pattern would be $9.99. We're not selling the pattern on its own because this is such a cracking deal. This is such a brilliant deal. And also, we really want you to make a couple of versions using these wonderful fabrics that Wendy's selected because it's going to look terrific. You're paying £7 for your panel. You know that's not right. 
You've been with us for a while now, all of you, I'm sure. You know how much we charge for a panel like this. This would normally be, what, 12 99 That would normally be 12 99 So that is terrific. But our, what I think is even better value is the fact that the pattern for the owl door stop can be reused over and over and over again because absolutely crucially you've got all of the full size pattern pieces to create this owl. Now obviously this version is done as a doorstop. It's weighted in the bottom, don't worry we've got those beads, we've got the toy stuffing, we've everything you need. But this would also make such a sweet toy, wouldn't it? Or have on the library shelf. There, Kat, are you happy now? Has You're Kat welcome. got her own library? Yeah. I think Kat's got her own library. She lives mm. in a very, very big mansion house. And um, it's a bit like, you know Cluedo? Yeah. It's a bit like that. Yeah, yeah. Now then, let me just tell you about the other bits and pieces that you'll need to go with your pattern and panel just to finish off the doorstop. Brilliant value these and so useful. $5.99, it's a kilogram bag of recycled polythene pellets. Now, great that they're recycled, I love that. Saving these from landfill, I reckon half a pack per doorstop. What do you think, Wendy? I'm tight. Three. I'm tight. You so use I, less. Go on. You pulled a face when I said half a bag. That's what way too much for me. A quarter. A quarter. <laughs> a quarter. But I'm, I'm there tight. You go. So possibly four. I would say two. I mean, the thing <laughs> is, I want a doorstop that's really going to do the job. I suppose it depends how heavy your doors are, doesn't it? You know. So, yeah. you know. Then you've got toy stuffing. Now, again, I reckon half a bag per her doorstop. Recycled again. Terrific. $4.99. So that's going to do two. This is going to do two or four. Your panel's <laughs> going to squeeze two out of it. Your pattern will make, goodness me, as many as you like. Wendy, what's your angel policy? I don't have one. The only thing that I do ask is yep. please do not replicate or sell the pattern in any don't way. Don't sell the pattern. But you can make as much as you want from it. Make you can and sell. Absolutely. Just make, so sell. Wouldn't make these be brilliant for like charity fundraising? Think of the personality, the different versions, and, and frankly as well, how brilliant as a scrapbuster because none of the pieces that you need are very large. And also we've established that the cutest version, in our opinion, is the one that's made of bits of fabric sewn together. So mm. now the smallest bit of fabric has got a beautiful use. Absolutely love it, Wendy. It's super. Now, um, H640, it's not a must for this project. It's not a must. But Wendy did wad one of the owls. And um, let's just, should we have a little look at the one that has been wadded? The mashup. The mashup's been the wadded. The mashup he owl. Was wadded. I love it, which is my favourite. He will be a little bit smaller because the wadding will put, pull him in slightly, but in not slightly. much. But look at how cute those quilted wings look. They are fab. It's definitely my favourite version. See, patched together, it's all it's, that's all it takes. Bit of patching, really, really cute. We're not wasting a scrap of fabric, not a scrap. are we? I didn't. No. And so then, Wendy, can I just ask, with the H640, how, where did you use it? Everywhere. Just everywhere. He's got it on his feet, he's got it in his wings, and with having it in the feet and wings, you can then quilt them. Yeah, so which I, the, I really the like. The stitching, the st you can still have the same effect on the other wings. Yeah. You could still do it on that, but because there's no wadding in there, yeah. you're not going to get those stitching pulling it down, creating that nice padded look. It does look. create a lovely texture. It and does. on the body as well. I put him everywhere and I quilted the body. So I just, just once the body pieces are cut out, wad them, quilt them if you want to. But you wouldn't have to. It's, it's a small enough item that if you don't want to do any quilting at all, you can just put that extra padding in. It just helps to fill the owl out, doesn't it? It's it gives really him a bit more stability, but yeah. the whole point of this project is that you need, you don't need anything else. You don't need to have wadding if no, you don't No, you don't need to. to do that, but it's a nice added extra, and we do love our H640 here. So that's our H640. Now, let me just let you know that Dusky and Monochrome are currently neck and neck, mm -hmm. both 
flying. Wendy's going to be demoing in the rainbow today, which I'm very excited to look at. Now, we've also got some canvases, which we've got on the website um, in an assortment of colours, maybe about four, five, six, seven, eight different colours. Really lovely, actually. Um, these would be great to add a base to your owl if you wanted to have, perhaps if you've got things like wooden floors or stone floors or anything like that, I would go for a sort of heavier weight just to make them a bit more durable on the base. Um, canvas is also fab for things like bag making. It's an option, it's on the website, have a look on the pre-order. Now Wendy's going to demo in the rainbow. We have also got some Bonderweb on the show also, which you'd need a little bit for the eyes, am I right? It's preferable to have them because it just keeps them in place. It's yeah. not essential, but I would you always... You could pin them and stitch them. You could, and I'm going to do that with the heart just to show you that, again, you don't need it, but it's always something that I have in my stash, and then it's just there if you need it. Um, this little one, he's the other mashup as well. So That's he's he's the, the monocro mashup. Yeah. Ah, and I, I ah. think he's amazing because he's got like... Not even half a head. <laughs> yeah. He's got like a little bit of a head. I love his wings. Just show the back of his wings all pieced together. Right. Those are terrific. See, that is full of character. It is. And Absolutely I, full. I really love that. And whatever fabric, I, I am not going to lie, I, I am tight. It's it's no secret Nothing here. Wrong with that. I'm frugal. I, I don't waste things. So I really did push it to the nth degree on this yeah, one. I totally agree with you. It, it would be an idea just to go with the flow and then maybe use a bit of plain from your stash. Yeah. Or that the can the canvas will be brilliant and yeah. the wings would look great in the canvas. They would look just good. nice. You place can wings. always supplement, can't you? Because it's got a sort of scrappy look, mm -hmm. you know, I mean go with the flow, emphasize that. Um, got some nice messages. Welsh Mary. Welsh Mary! I know Welsh Mary really well. She's been to some of my classes. Good morning, lovely Stuart and Wendy. It's lovely to see you on Sewing Street. I love your ideas and Wendy is always <laughs> great. Hugs from Welsh Aww. Mary. Ah, bless Thank you. you. Thank <laughs> you. And a message from Mandy. Morning, Stuart and Wendy. Just bought the grey and rainbow owl. Great for presents. Looking forward to the demonstrations from Mandy. Thank you so much, Mandy. And I'm looking forward to the pics. <laughs> oh, me too, me too. We <laughs> love seeing what I you make. Them. We yes. really do. Um, right. Right. Let's see what you so can show us. These are the two <laughs> owls that I've made uh, with one panel. Which and you, panel was that? That was... <coughs> dusky. Dusky. Mm -hmm. Yes, I thought it said dusty, but it's dusky, isn't it? It's dusky. <laughs> um, you can see that I have mashed it up a little bit, this one because he's got different colours. Um, and he was the quilted one, and he isn't. You can't really tell any difference, so no. just go with the flow. Yeah. Just just do what you like here. Whatever feels good. And if you want a particular colour eye that you've got in your stash, just go with that. And with the pattern, I made sure you're... I, I, I haven't missed pages out, <laughs> but I thought it was very important. I, I My bugbear is when you have a pattern and then on the other half of something you need is something else. Okay. So that's the whole point why I've missed the pages out. So, so you would cut up I the wouldn't. pattern? I wouldn't. No, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't, but I, I also but do some know do. there's some people out there that maybe don't have their hands on a, a photocopier or can to get to do that. So yes, you can absolutely cut the pattern out and it's a nice enough thickness to last and last and last. Or you could do what I've done here. And I don't know if you've got any in stock at the moment. This is the freezer paper. Now, this is absolutely fantastic to use because although it, it, it isn't sticky, if you do press it onto the fabric, mm. it will stay there while you draw round. Yeah. I love using this. I do too. So you could do that. Or my option would be to photocopy it. Mm -hmm. So I would place this on the photocopier and then just photocopy and cut them out. I may even transfer them onto card so that I can use them forever. Yeah. But, but there is absolutely the option there. Um, I've, I've found out in the past that not everyone does have the ability to be able to get to a photocopy, so they need to cut them so out. There. And of course, they are full size. They are Seam absolutely. included? Yes. I, I, again, I can't be doing any of that adding on adding after on. and guesswork. It's all there for you. So what you cut out, you cut out. The one thing I would say is if you start cutting on the outer line, make sure you cut them all on the outer line. Okay. If you cut them on the inner line, it's going to be slightly smaller. So I, I would cut them just 
as I have here, <coughs> I've cut them out, so I've gone around the outside that of the line. That fold line's preserved. And then you'll know, oh, I like that word. Yeah. And then you'll know they will fit. Bev's messaging <laughs> says, it's amazing how different the owls are depending on where you put the black circles. Different expressions. Oh, yes. Isn't it? So we've got one looking down. Yeah. We have one looking, uh, like, bit in headlights. Yeah. And then he's looking at you. He's got his eye on you. He really has, hasn't <laughs> he? And I've got his eye of my eye. Or you him. could have them going in opposite directions. <laughs> <laughs> one <laughs> looking <laughs> at you, one looking for you. Oh, I like it. I, I like love it. That expression. <laughs> so that's the first thing to do is to cut all your templates out or photocopy them or trace them. I've got to just say, Wendy, I'm feeling slightly envious of Louise, who is currently sitting in M&S watching us on free Wi-Fi on her iPad with a cuppa and a sausage chia <gasps> butter. Oh. Check you out. Uh, waiting for her car to be serviced and get a bit of shopping done before she goes and picks it back up. And while she's waiting, she's enjoying um, the street. That is Fabulous. my kind of morning, my that kind is. My kind of morning too. Especially having the coffee on the side. That's it, yeah. Now, the body and the head are cut on the fold. Now, I, I couldn't, well, I, I, I could have put them across the page, but it's very easy and then it keeps everything compact. Yeah. And it is a very simple thing to do. You would fold your fabric in half and I like to do it right sides together because then if I make any markings it's on the back of the fabric Very good. and then you draw around and you must remember do not cut out along the dotted line because then you'll just have two pieces not the end of the world you'd have to sew it back together again but then you'd have to do that for all the pieces otherwise they wouldn't fit yeah and then you have your um, one piece and I, what I wanted to do so I've cut the the, the body out and I've noticed, I've made a huge error, because owls do not have noses, do they? Um, they don't, do they? They're called beaks. They're beaks. Yeah, so I've called it a nose. That's all right. I do apologise. Owls haven't got ears on the tops of their heads either. But I haven't called them ears, because oh, I've, I've, I've sneaked them in the head ah, bit. Because <laughs> so we call these bits the ears, don't we? And actually the ears are somewhere down here. They're like the little... Where <laughs> are we? They're like feather tufts, but they, are, they look they? cute. Yeah, they do look, they're, they're feather tufts. <laughs> but you could always accentuate them with a little bit of wool and do some that little tufties out the, out the corner. But what I wanted to show you was if you want to mash the fabric up. So if you, if you haven't got quite enough to make it on the fold, then what you can do is you can create it using two pieces of fabric. So that's not quite big enough. Um, so I'm going to put them together. Now for this one, I'm I am going to do the fold down the center, but with with this one here, the fold was at the side. Yeah. Now that doesn't matter, that's even better because when I folded the fabric to cut it out, there was no fold in the middle anyway for me to worry about. But I just want to show you if you want to do it you in half. You could half square triangles oh. here and there, couldn't you? Oh I mean, my goodness. Whatever you fancy doing, it's such a fun project. I, I just couldn't stop. No, I can, I can see why. You can see that. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, total make time is, is a fun afternoon, isn't it, to make one? It's an evening, an evening make. It's an evening or a fun afternoon. And we know that, that lots of us are time poor when it comes to making our projects. We'd love more time. I think we'd all love oh. more time. I've always said that. I always say that to my kids who are not kids anymore. When they went to bed, it was like, I'd like another 10 hours just for yeah. me. Um, all I'm doing here is trimming two edges just so they're even and that's that when I put them together it's just neat. It doesn't matter. I'm going to sew them together. Now you can use a quarter of an inch, you can use a centimetre, but we just want to sew these two together. I, I do happen to be using, oh, no, I'm just using a the normal one that my machine has set for me. Like a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So now I'm going to set it to a quarter because I didn't. So for the rest of the owl, yeah. it's a quarter. Yeah. But just and for patching your fabrics together, you could do it like that. <laughs> that was a dry run. That was just to make sure everyone knew what they were doing. And um, while you're threading up, I've got a little question <laughs> Thank from you, Marion. Good morning, Wendy and Stuart. It's from Wendy. Lovely to see and hear your gentle voices. Good for my ears anyway. Oh. Uh, what needle do I use for PU? I've never used it before. We had some lovely PU in the last <gasps> hour. Well, Wendy, the good news is, Marion, sorry, the good news is you don't need to use a leather needle or anything special. You just need a machine needle with a sharp point. So in other words, not a ball point or a jersey needle. So I would use either a universal needle 
or my favourite are called Microtechs. And I use them for piecing, quilting, bag making. I just love them because they have a really slim, super sharp point. Um, they're, they're great. And that's what I would use for PU. Regular sewing thread, absolutely perfect. Just colour to match or contrast. And I would use sort of like things like wonder clips to hold my fabrics together rather than pins. And a seam roller rather than using the iron. You don't want to melt your PU. Um, just while Wendy's getting that done. Um, oh, nice nice uh, little message from Jan, who's referring back to our producer Kat's house, being like the Cluedo mansion. She says, I suggest it was done in the library by Miss Scarlet Ooh. with the owl. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you were going to use the owl, it would definitely need the whole bag of pellets in the bottom. I'm not suggesting you do that, by the way. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> so, seam, seam, yeah. sewn? I've sewn my seam, Fabulous. yes, he's, he's now behaving, thank you. Um, and I haven't opened the seam at this point because what I want to do is I'm going to, if I put this on the edge of the fabric here, that wouldn't be any good to me because right. I haven't allowed for the, the seam. Yep. So you place it on the stitch line. Gotcha. So, And that's if you're putting two together that are exactly the same. If you're not and there's no seam line there, then you're absolutely fine just to go ahead and put it on the edge of the fabric Great. and you draw around. So you mark around with a fabric pen or you could use a friction pen. We've got friction pens on the show as well, black friction pen. They are my absolute favourite. I do have one. He is there. Uh, you always use them. You don't want to be using them in anything that you put heat against. No. Um, until you've cut them out, <laughs> which I right. found the other day. I ironed it, pressed it, and they all disappeared. Oh. But they are my go-to, and you do the, the larger nib as well now, which is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I it's love just a ones. great product, isn't it? It is. But you know, I think it's good to have a few different marking tools in your toolbox because sometimes it's the colour, sometimes it's the pattern of the fabric. Your one marking tool will work better on some fabrics than others. I love a chalk, like a Chaco oh, liner. Oh my goodness, I was just I saying, I've got, um, I was making pom-poms at the weekend. Uh -huh. and as you do. As you <laughs> Welcome to Wendy's World everybody. I made loads of hats for people with pom poms, oh, cute. and um, so I make my own pom poms, and mm -hmm. I have to use the chalk because nothing else would show because no. it was it was a dark fabric. Now I can press this open. Only once I've cut it out is that when you press it open, or you can press it open or press it over to the dark side. It doesn't matter. And now that's the right size. And doesn't yeah. that look terrific? I like done these in two. The patched orange. I love these two. I love these this two. is the rainbow version, by the way, that Wendy's using. Now, half the stock of Dusky and half the mm. stock of Monochrome have sold out. Well done you for checking out your basket. Mm. Um, rainbow doing well too. Can't wait to see Ooh. the rainbow no, version. No, I can't. I can't wait so to see that. So are you using a patched one side and a, and a solid the other? Uh, or patched both sides? Yes, I'm, sorry, yes to your first one. I'm using patched one side on the front. Yep. And then because he's going to be against the door, I thought, why don't I just use the plane against the yeah, back? Yeah, for sure. Because then it's nothing wasted. Yeah. So he, the plane... So Osnaberg the, would be useful for that. Mm. We had Osnaberg in the last hour. Um, £2.50 for a half metre. I mean, I'm just thinking of all these different ways that we can make your panel mm. stretch. And, and it was very important. Amy did an amazing job on designing the, the panel. We, we, it had to be something that wasn't... Um, a wing shape or a foot shape because then it can be used for other projects. For sure. If you only need to make one owl, yeah. there is going to be fabric left over. Yeah, then yeah. You can use it for something else. Yeah, of course you can. So now we're going to sew the top and the bottom together, but you will see that one is concur well, convex and one is concave. So it looks like they're not going to match because when you put them together. Oh, oh, okay, I see. It does, doesn't it? It looks like yeah. they, they're not going to match. They will because they are the right size. So the first thing that you want to do is put one corner and pin him or her, pin that, and then pin the other corner. And you want to line those up. And it does state in the instructions, um, I think, and I haven't pressed this one, I, I tell you not to press them when you've cut them out because that centre line is very handy. It's really useful. It is. <laughs> and then you line the centre up. So do those three points first. Of course, if you're using a whole piece of fabric, you've got that fold line in the centre, haven't you? Yep. 
And yes. um, just a gentle crease, I would suggest there. Mm. When you need a, a fold for cutting against, don't get your eye and your steam iron out and whack a really solid crease in the middle because that crease really never comes it out. It won't come it? out. Fabric's got a <laughs> hell of a memory. Oh, it has. Oh, I've done that before. I thought, well, I'll give it a good crease and then yeah, I just can't get it out. I've seen it on, on like a plique blocks, on mm. quilts that have been oh. quilted and mm. everything. And you can still see those foundation creases that the maker yeah. used to position their appliques. So just a real gentle finger press. Definitely. And it's really important at this stage that you do pin. Lots of pins. Lots of pins. And then we, we sew along here and, as I say, it is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You could use a glue stick there as well if you wanted to use glue stick to hold your edges together, if you prefer that to pins. So many of you watching the demos, it's terrific, isn't it? Anne, good morning, Stuart, and all nice to see you. Um, some nice little um, emojis there as well. Christmas tree, <laughs> cup of coffee, heart. Oh. Couldn't agree more. Mm. Um, so lovely to have you, uh, your company this morning, everybody, for this fab brand new project. Remember, this is exclusive to us here at Sewing Street. You can't get it anywhere else. A gorgeous panel, which we reckon will make two uh, of these owl door stops with a bit of patching together. A, a lot of patching, a yes. A lot of patching. I love <laughs> a lot of patching. It's what I do. But I wouldn't waste <laughs> it on the bottom. I would I yeah. would use just a, a canvas. Yeah, the Vosnerberg. That would be amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. And remember, we've also got on the show, we've got um, the recycled toy stuffing. You'll need one bag of that. 4 99 will make two doorstops. We've also got the bag of recycled polythene pellets and between us, Wendy and I reckon you'd get about three. <laughs> Let's go down the middle then. Let's go Let's down go. the middle. But yeah, mine, mine, you can, they, they thud, but not, oh, yeah. so there is a little, th I'd like a little thud. But they're not, there. An, they but thud, they're not, but they're not an offensive weapon, <laughs> I think is what we're saying. Um, Just to reassure Jan in the mansion <laughs> with Miss Scarlet. Oh yes, I don't, I don't think it would do any damage. Um, but it, your point is very valid because our doors at home, none of them blow shut. Right. So it, it's you literally it decorative in ours. Yeah. But some of the doors are, are rather heavy and, and they would, would, so you would need more. So what you've made there then, that is the head this and is, the lower and body. It is. Gotcha. And gotcha. this would be a fantastic project for someone that wants to learn to sew. Because like it's it. got everything in there. It's got a bit of a plique. It's yep. got piecing together, yep. um, and it, it's then it's three D at yes, the end it of is. it. Yeah. So it has got everything in there hasn't for got you. Hasn't fit you. I've done it again. Oh, hasn't got to fit you. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, when, when when people want to start sewing and they pick a dressmaking thing as their <laughs> first project. Yeah. Oh, can I steer you towards an apron, please? But do you know what? I kind of like those people because oh, sure. just go yeah, for it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Message from Gina. Morning. Quick question. Yes. Can Osnaberg be used to make cushioned backs with a panel or a plique? The owl Ooh. fronts. Thank you, Gina. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Gina. What a fantastic idea. What a fantastic and idea. And something I will be doing later. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> we're, nicking, we're nicking that. Um, yeah, I definitely use Osnaberg for that. It would be a lovely texture. I Actually, really nice with the dusky. The Osnaberg and the dusky panel Ooh, would work particularly yes. well together, wouldn't yes. they? But you could absolutely use Definitely. it for the backs of cushions. Again, Gina, my advice would always be, um, because you've got um, different sort of how tightly woven these mm -hmm. fabrics are, pre-wash your Osnaberg just so that it's pre-shrunk. Um, and yeah, it would be brilliant for that. Backs of table runners, backs Ooh, of yes. quilts as well. Yes. It's really, really useful stuff. And it's back in stock. We can't keep it in stock. It's it's just gorgeous, isn't it? It's lovely for doll making, I think. Oh, yes, it's yes. Lovely for that. And also for things like, now I can't remember if it's Bootis, Booty, or um, Trapunto that it's good for backing as well. Booty. Booty. <laughs> it's French, um, like stuffed, corded quilting. Oh, yes. It's B-O-U-T-I-S. I love that look. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is. Now, what I have said to do is press the excess fabric 
towards the head and then sew a line of top stitching down here. This is just because I like to see top stitching because I just think it makes something look a bit more fancy. <laughs> I, like, I like top stitching. I love you top stitching. You could also understitch it, couldn't you, if you mm. didn't want to see it? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you would still see but it. But I, I, like, I like the fact because I, like I just think stitching. it looks a little bit more elegant, a little mm. bit more classy. So, but I won't do that because that's going to take just a little bit of time. But I would just top stitch very close to that, but make sure that you fold the fabric that side to catch it into it. Just to control the seam allowance it as well. Yeah. Now, actually I'm going to leave that because now with the fun part, now is to give him a little bit of personality. I've put some uh, bond web on the back, on the reverse of the fabric for his outer eyes. And then I've cut out his inner eyes, and then I, um, his middle eyes, and then I've cut out his inner eyes. Gorgeous. I hate that. that looks really effective, those colours, doesn't really it? It's really effective. effective. I'm loving the rainbow. And interestingly, Wendy, rainbow is now neck and neck with dusky Ooh. and monochrome. Because the, the, the rainbow is really fun. I think it's lovely. I love the rainbow one. It is my favourite. If rainbow you love one. the bright colours, children's yeah. room. It is, it is. Um, I have just missed out a step. I've just realised that. Before you put these two together, you need to put the nose in there. You Yes. <laughs> Yes. You put the beak in there. Yes. Um, I'm going to. I've, have we got time for me to unpick that little bit and just slip Why the nose in? Why don't you do the eyes? Well, you can do the eyes and then do the beak. Okay. Couldn't you? I, well, because he needs to go in trapped in that seam, doesn't he? Yeah. And I just need. Well, yes, I can. I can yeah. do the eyes and then that. Just thinking while you've got the eyes there. Yes. I'm just thinking of the owl poor thing. It just <laughs> had a glimpse of the world. Now you've taken it away. <laughs> Oh, I got. I just. I did it the other day as well. I get so carried away in the moment. It's like I just oh, want to I make it. All the time. I'm putting these fairly close together, but I don't want to go too close to there no. um, because you have got that seam back there. But it's up to you. You can put them. Well, you wouldn't really want them at the top of his head, but you can put them anywhere. <laughs> I guess up. you could overlap them a bit if you yeah, wanted that would to. Be fine. This is all down to your personal preference. Now I have got the equal amount of fabric either side, but if you're doing a scrappy one, it's just they could be placed anywhere it's yeah, just they really could couldn't they, they? Could. could i add spectacles you are oh, you're just giving me all these <laughs> ideas now wise old owl oh my goodness the guardian of the library <laughs> <laughs> now you will find that because the middle and the inner are far enough away from the edge you can put them all in on together normally with a plique i like to put one on and then stitch it and then yep. put another but with this one you can go in and do it all at once yes. and I'm just having a little bit of trouble taking the backing off, so I just score that paper with a pin and then it comes off really easy. And that helps as well to not distort the outer edges as if you're taking it outwards. Definitely. And then, and I'm, I'm just making a little note of the way that my triangles, it, you don't have to have them, but I like them to match. So. Oh, I say. Um, That's detailed. Oh, yes, yes. I just thought the green were amazing. Slap, it, slap them on. <laughs> I'd notice it afterwards. And then go, oh. Mm, <laughs> should I? Um, oh, where should we have this one looking? Should we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. It has to be done. It's Christmas. <laughs> He's been on the mulled wine. <laughs> Sorry, it has to be done. Do it. Why not? Why not? And then because I've taken all the backing paper off and I've revealed the glue side to the fabric, then, oh, oh yes, I like that one. He's going to be my... That reminds me of you, Stuart, when you've had too much wine. <laughs> Do you know, I'm not, I've, half a glass, I'm done. I've not got a, yeah. No, I, well, I can't do any. Do I had know? a mocktail the other day. I was quite, yes, I was quite pleased with myself. Mm. I'll pass on that. Um, oh. But I just have one. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to zigzag, and this is where you can go wild. You can use whatever stitches your machine wants. Mm. I like a good old zigzag. Mm. Um, and you want to make sure that it's wide enough to, to catch the fabric, but if you make it too wide and too long, the stitch, it's quite difficult to go around circles. So it it's is. nice to keep it nice and short yep. and narrow, because all we're going to do is catch that edge. And I'm going to start here because I'm a little bit sneaky, because then I'll go all the way around. <laughs> when I get there, I'll do the other one instead, instead of having to stop. Brilliant. I'm going to set my machine on my zigzag stitch. And so. do you use a colour that matches your thread? It matches your fabric? Um, so on these ones, I've done white. Yep. And then on these ones, I did change my thread. Mm -hmm. So these two inner eyes, I did change it to the thread that matched. Mm. But the other ones, I did white. Mm. And I'm going to... You could also add things like little eyelashes, couldn't Ooh, you? That yes. would be cute. Some little eyelashes. Yes. Top and bottom, maybe, or just the top. 
Oh, that's Top lashes. far too wide. So that's um, fine. And I adore, actually, Wendy, I adore how you use the little decorative stitch to create a little <laughs> highlight. It was a little snowflake. A little snowflake is gorgeous. Because uh, uh, we buy a machine, don't we? And then we go, oh, but it's got like 24,000 yeah. stitches and we use one. So have a look at your machine and see what you can find. Or you could hand embroider. Oh, that would be great. You, that would be good. Embroider. There's nothing to stop you doing that too. And again, for someone that, um, if you've got um, a child that is interested in sewing, that would be good yeah. because then if you've got the hand embroidery element of it, mm -hmm. and I'm just taking well, it nice and gentle. Of seed beads. Oh yes, that, that would be good. Too. Yes, and again, obviously, depending what you're going to use it for, you'll, you'll obviously have to be mindful of the audience that's going to have it and just make sure it's safe. But there's yeah. nothing sharp on here. You're stitching everything, so there's nothing loose at all. So I'm going around the outside and then when I get to where I started back in the middle and I'm a little bit sneaky and I just turn around and go around the other way Yeah. Um, because I don't like wasting thread and I've kept the stitch, I've kept it to a, a one length and that gives me the scope to be able to go around the corners nice, well not, it's not a corner as such but you're going around the curved edge aren't you? So Seth, there's a corner on that set for Wendy. You haven't done a very good job cutting it out. I don't think I've had enough coffee this morning, to be perfectly honest. You know what they say, you haven't had enough coffee unless you can thread your machine while it's running. Oh, no, that, 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 <laughs> that wouldn't be for it's me. Just saying, it's not, it's not yes. a suggestion. <laughs> we don't recommend trying that. Yeah, no, but I saw that on a, I think it was on a coffee mug or a T-shirt or something, which I just thought was quite funny. I've never seen a coffee. Yeah. I'm a tea boy. Oh, I like this one. I think he's going to be my favourite. Yeah. He does. He looks like he's had too much coffee, doesn't Adorable. he? So I've gone around the outside. I'm not going to go around all the others because I sure. want to get on to putting him together. Mm. But you would go, I would change my thread. Yeah. For this one, I would go for green in here. Um, or you could do the opposite. You could do um, a really bold one if you're really confident with your stitching. Black and you would be nice around black. the eye, wouldn't it? I would probably tend to, to take the okay. stitch right down yep. so that it then almost created a solid black line. Beautiful. That would be amazing. Beautiful. Right, um, I'm going to look. Have we got a stitch? Have we got a stitch? What's his. Um, a stitch ripper? That's the one. The Grim Reaper. <laughs> the Grim Ripper. Have we got oh, sure, oh, That's one I have. There because you I go. can't have him. Beakless, although I want to say noseless because I don't know why I've called it a nose. Yeah, well, <laughs> they smell. <laughs> they smell there as well, don't they? They've Do got they? the little, little, they've got nostrils. Oh, well, then, okay. Beaks, if they've so got nostrils, it's a nose. A nose? It's a nose. <laughs> now, if this does happen to you, just do what I'm doing. Quite. <laughs> There's nothing in sewing. Unless you cut a great big hole where it shouldn't be, yeah. that you can't sort out. There it's really true. isn't. I just get carried away because I just get the crane. Oh, the I'm always making bags and forgetting to leave a hole in the lining and <laughs> then having to go in. It's not a big issue. It is isn't, it? no. You know, the person who never made a mistake never made anything. Well, do you know you learn by your mistakes? You do. And also, and it's I'm good actually when you show, well, what happens if you do? do this? Well, I think sometimes we're all very, we've got to be perfect in every form of life and we don't no. and we make mistakes too I've, I've the other <laughs> the other day I was making my pom-poms yeah no I wasn't I was sewing my blanket together that will you see later and I was stitching away on my nap and I did what Neil did and oh. I went to pull the blanket away and I literally sewn it, sewn it to my trousers yeah. yes um, so we get our beak now I've again <laughs> I've chosen the orientation of the fabric okay. so that it doesn't matter because the one of the back part won't show. So this one here is going to be the front of my beak. And we place right sides together. The front of your what? Beak. Nose. Nose. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm trying to I'm trying to make it better. <laughs> I'm trying to make it better here now. I'm trying to um, I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam down this side, stop a quarter of an inch for the bottom, and then a quarter of an inch. When you're sewing anything that needs to be turned out, it's a good idea to do a reverse stitch at each end. You're loving this brand new project, by the way. Thank you so much, everyone who's bought and also who have checked out. Um, in the lead, it's Rainbow. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> Rainbow is wonderful. Let me just show you that panel again. It is such. Look at all those gorgeous fabrics. 
Oh, it's really close actually, really close. It's just like a few between the top, which is rainbow, dusky in the middle, behind by a couple, and then um, monochrome is one behind. Trailing by one, but you know, someone's got to be last. They have, haven't they? You know? They have, and I don't mind being it's last. Life. <laughs> it is life. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've trimmed down the edge quite close to the stitching here, uh -huh. um, and a little bit off the bottom, and then trimmed the other side. You don't want to go so close that you cut into the stitching, but you want to go fairly close. There's not going to be anything pulling on this because it really is a doorstop. Absolutely. Um, if, if it's going to be used for a toy, then maybe I would probably leave a little bit more. Yeah. And then I'm going to push this through. Uh, nice message from Andrea, which I totally agree with. When I do something wrong, I don't call them mistakes. I call them unique design they features. Are. But he wouldn't be able to smell if I didn't put him one on. No, it's true. It is true. Absolutely. That, no, that is a mistake, isn't it? I mean, he, well, he you could <laughs> always applique the beak to the owl anyway, couldn't you? You could put Bond Web on the back and you could applique yes, it. Yes, I could have so done. So it was flat. No, I'm just like, I, there are different options. Because, no, like, for can. example, it might be that you want to make this as, you know, a little decorator doll or something, but you don't want bits sticking oh, out. Oh, I knew that. That's why I did it. I knew that. It was just another option, But, but yes, it? to the lady's point that was going to, I'm sorry I've forgotten her name, I'm useless with names, um, that was going to put it on the front of a cushion. Yeah. Maybe you wouldn't want a three-dimensional one then, would you? You maybe just want to applique it on. Yeah, and the right. same with the wings. You know, you can have them out, you can have them tucked mm -hmm. over, you know, mm -hmm. you could put a little branch as well. You could you could cut and sew a branch. Oh, that's a you good idea. You could have three owls in a row on a rectangular cushion. Oh, cute. yes. Yes. Right. I'm not sure how central this is going to be, but he is. He has been to the Christmas party and had too much juice, hasn't he? He He's really just has fabulous. this one. Yes, he has <laughs> had too much juice, for he sure. Has. He's had too much Christmas spirit. He has had um, too much Christmas spirit. Cat, our producers spirit. just had the most wonderful idea, Wendy, which Ooh. I know you Ooh. will approve of. Oh, yes. Okay. So, yep. you make a yep. draft excluder oh, out yep. of a woody brown <gasps> fabric. Right. Do you know where this is going? No, I don't. I haven't then got... you make oh my gosh, for the... three yes. owls sitting on the branch and that's your draft excluder. How fabulous. Um, I'm, I'm going to steal that idea. Yes, absolutely. That will be a new <laughs> pattern coming to Stone Street. <laughs> now that'll probably be up later on the Facebook page. So I've now put his... <laughs> he does look very wonky, doesn't he? Bless him, look at he him. He really so does. I've now put his his nosy beak, his nosy beak in there. Yep. <laughs> and it's exactly the same as I've just done for the uh, the nosy beak yep. for the wings. You cut them out and you place right sides together. Now this time we are sewing round a curve. Yep. So just take it nice and slow. Any tips? Stitch length? Um, I keep the stitch length, I let the machine decide because this machine is amazing. So I would tell you that my stitch length is a two mm -hmm. and you can reduce the stitch length. Two works perfect, but I'm looking, I'm keeping my eye on the, my eye line at the side of the, the foot and I want to be sewing straight, which sounds really weird because I'm going around a curve but I want to keep fabric on the edge of that foot at all times. So as soon as it starts to go off, I lift my foot and I turn it slightly. Mm -hmm. And then I carry on until it goes, I can't see it anymore, and then I lift and turn. And I keep doing that, and if you do that, you're going to get a really nice curve. If you want to just go for it, <laughs> absolutely, which I probably could have done with our wonky owl, couldn't I? Um, but it's little and often. Little and often is the key. And then I'm I'm okay now because I've got a nice long section. All the machine speed. Oh, up and we're off. Home run. <laughs> Pedal to the metal. Yeah. Remember, <laughs> Wendy's project is available in three different colorways. Wendy's working on the rainbow, and those are the graphics that are on screen right now. But we started off with dusky, um, which absolutely would fit into my home so beautifully. It's that lovely collection of kind of chambray blues. Golds, there's kind of putty pink and um, a little bit of kind of browns and charcoal. Really lovely that one, that's beautiful. So that is dusky. 
And you also get um, the full instructions, of course, which means that you can make as many owls as you like. Remember, um, Wendy's uh, angel policy is that you can make as many as you like, you can sell them, um, don't reproduce the pattern, don't lend the pattern, give it away. Um, but, and acknowledge, I would mm -hmm. always ask as well that you acknowledge Wendy. So if you're selling them, have a little label that says from a design by Wendy Orlando. Mm -hmm. Just gives that nod to the designer. Um, now there's also a third colorway, which is monochrome. So if you know somebody who's got a house which is all kind of silvers and greys, very smart, very chic, this is gonna look terrific. There aren't quite 50 shades of grey in this panel, but I think there's probably about 11. Don't quote me. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There you go. Oh, OK. <laughs> Lovely, though, isn't it? And again, if you wanted to add a little pop of colour to that, you could cut out the heart from pink, lilac, red, something like that, and applique it to the owl's chest, or leave it off and you could do a 3D one, couldn't you? Like a little cushion for him you to could. hold. Or you could put it in the heart position where his heart nice. is, couldn't you? That's, I've nice. seen some teddies with that. Question from Valerie. It's a question. Hi, Stuart and Wendy. Lovely owls. Could you enlarge or shrink the pattern pieces to make a family? OK. <laughs> you could absolutely reduce them down. So I think that this would have to be mummy and daddy. Yep. Because uh, you could reduce it down. You can enlarge it if you know what you're doing on the photocopier. Okay. Because what, what will happen is it will have to go over two or three pages if you enlarge them, but absolutely yes. It will just be taping the pieces yeah. together. I don't have it? an issue with that. I like a good bit of tape and I, I like a bit of glue great. petering, yeah. but I know that, again, it's, it's a bit confusing. When you do enlarge them, make sure, enlarge or reduce them, make sure that both the patterns are enlarged by exactly the same percentage, otherwise they won't fit. Yeah, and I would suggest not a massive mm -hmm. percentage difference either. <laughs> Remember, my husband has an accessories company and um, in one of the things he makes are bags, like evening bags. And we had a sample and it was really rather small. And Charlie said, well, we want it a bit bigger than this. And I said, well, how much bigger? He said, well, I don't know, maybe like 50% bigger. So we put, make it 50% bigger. <laughs> and when it came, it was like a suitcase. No. Well, it was huge, because it was 50, it was half again as big in all directions. And of course, mm. in three dimensions, that creates a massive extra volume. And because your owl is 3D, it's going to end but, up... But nowadays, it's much easier because you get to preview. Yeah, so you when do. you when you enlarge something on the computer, yeah. it will preview it. And then if it's gone over 25 pages, you know you've gone too large. Absolutely. If it's gone over, if you've got it on one page that goes over to two, you know that it's probably going to be OK. But even so like just, a 10, 15, up to 20% I'm going to have a play and, and I will let everyone know yeah. if possible. I just wanted to show you another way that you could to do this and this would be great for someone that is fairly new mm -hmm. because instead of cutting around these uh, instead of drawing around them and cutting out I'm laying my two pieces of fabric that I've chosen for the foot and I'm placing them right sides together and then I'm going to draw around the template and this time I'm not going to cut it out I'm just going to put a pin in the centre to stabilise it, mm -hmm. or three. Put a pin, and then I'm going to sew using the line as the edge of the guide. So you still need your seam allowance, a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but instead of cut it, uh, having your foot against nothing, you've uh -huh. got it against that fabric. That's a great and idea. And it's much easier uh -huh. to, if, if someone is fairly new to working around more curves, stable. it is much more stable because now <coughs> I can use the fabric mm -hmm. that's around the outside and you can see here, make sure your pin's not in the way, you can see I'm actually using the fabric and pulling it around that curve instead of lifting my foot up and down, I'm yep. using that. What you do need to do is reverse on the line because you do need to cut that line. Yeah. And you're not using the line as a sewing line, you're still working a quarter of an inch away from I that line. I am using that, I'm, I'm putting the edge of my foot on that line 
so that then my seam is a quarter of an inch away. Perfect. Um, and But now when you cut it, it's again, it's much easier to cut because you've got more fabric in your hand. Yeah. And I, I would always recommend doing it this way if someone is fairly new to doing this technique. Or again, if you're teaching someone and they're learning, the last thing you want them to do is not be able to do it because they'll give up. And we yeah. don't want that, do we? No, we so really I've cut don't. that out now. And when I turn it in the other way, and because I've reverse stitched, on the line, it's nice and stable at the end. Mm, definitely. And that's my little foot. How much time? We haven't got much Thank time, you. have we? You're all right. <laughs> We've got okay. about five minutes. Oh, okay. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, mate, two. Yes. <laughs> well, two feet at the very least. <laughs> um, and again, I, I'm using the fabric because it's there and I love it, but you don't have to use nice fabric on the bottom of your foot because you can't see it. No, true enough. The wings you can yeah. because you can either have them stood out if you've put. Um, wadding yep. they will naturally stand out if you have wadding yep. whereas if you haven't put wadding then they tend to fall down but you still see both sides right i do like that look though i think it looks super well it looks super whether it's quilted or unquilted but just adding that extra layer of h640 just helps to create a little bit of extra dimension and i suppose things like when you applique the heart on you'll get that little bit more definition won't you mm -hmm. yeah so i haven't put my heart on but you could put it in the heart position i don't know where it, the heart position is but you could put it there. On the left? Is it? Oh, I don't he know. could have his heart on his sleeve. Have, he, oh, we, we could, couldn't we? Well, he's been drinking, so he probably <laughs> would be making random texts. This one definitely has, not it? Or something um, like that. And again, I make everything simple. I don't worry about measuring. I just say, place it below the line, the mm -hmm. stitch line. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you've got a, a curved body. I certainly have. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I, I thought I was you were sorry, talking, I talking to me. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was sorry. I wouldn't be that rude. <laughs> um, I place it at the bottom, underneath the stitch line, and then again you've got a straight going into a curve. And I would always pin here. Don't just um, wing it. <laughs> I didn't. That one went over. Oh, here. I like yeah, it. No, that went over. No, here. sorry, that was a little <laughs> bit like a lead balloon, wasn't it? <laughs> that was. It's like okay, you weren't listening. <laughs> no, it was. Um, and the reason I do say to pin it because I would sew down this side, and then when I put this one on, I'd sew up. And if you haven't got it pinned, it's not going to fit. Okay. And just take, you just now need to be aware that the, the fabric that is against the body is the one that will show. Yes. So this is the back of your wing. Gotcha. Right. You see, I've got odd wings. I've got a yellow one and a blue one. And I'm getting so much better at random. I didn't do random when I first started. Okay. Well, I think I've embraced my random like a toy or something that's mm. whimsical or cute. It's easier to embrace. Yes. The, those kind of oddities, perhaps, isn't it? Like the the eyes going in different directions, <laughs> the wings. Oh, I like me. At different <laughs> points. Yeah, no, but it's a freeing project, it isn't is. it? And also, um, it's a it's an educational as well because yeah. you can say where's the blue where's yellow and I yeah, think that's, that's brilliant true. Nice, I'm, I'm nice all for something that teaches you when you don't know you're teaching Great. and when you're learning yeah yes, and if you do different <laughs> sizes as well it helps with things like bigger oh, smaller yes. middle sized largest yes. oh that's a good idea and of course as well with things like this positional language is a great one to teach with kids too so you have the owl yes. above the chair under the chair behind to the right to the left inside wow. round the back all these sorts of things it's fun isn't it it is and i'm just stitching oh, with I miss teaching when i taught like that <laughs> makes me makes me nostalgic I, yeah. I used to be a trampoline coach and i loved Did teaching you? yes yes and i i loved teaching i just <gasps> it was just amazing wow. um, oh yes i loved it are you good on a trampoline? Mm, uh, no, I can do a somersault. It's not a but question you can ask everybody, <laughs> is it? I could do a somersault, but I don't think I would now. I, no. I think you lose your nerve as you get older, don't you? You do. You do. <laughs> well, they, you know, they say the folly of youth, but also you're mm. braver, you're yeah. more courageous, aren't you? <laughs> um, and again, because I haven't, um, I say not to press it, then you've still got that centre line where you can position your feet. Now you can put your feet, oh no, I think I, oh, do you know what? I'm going to have one and one, just Why because not? I can. Just um, looking at him now, that is definitely that sort <laughs> of, you know, he's in for a big night out and he's sort of fetal now, oh, isn't he? I, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you Leave can, me alone. <laughs> you can have them as wide. I mean, it'd be better to have wide. It'd I be can't a bit more feel my wings. 
<laughs> it'd be a bit more stable, but don't go too wide that you want you catch them into the seam allowance. True. And I'm using that center seam as a guide, and I'm just making sure that they're equal. Well, they don't have to be. You could have one. He could be sidestepping, happy couldn't feet. he? He could I've be. Got those happy feet. He was supposed to be, look, you know, <laughs> quite sophisticated. This project. Easy, easy. Not, <laughs> I'm not sure you cracked it this time. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> We've got about two minutes left on demo, <laughs> Wendy. Oh dear! But isn't this adorable? And you know what? If you're wanting a fun, freeing, um, you know, a, a, a project that you can do in a fun afternoon or an evening, or you know, you're getting together with friends and you're doing a bit of sewing and you want something that's going to make you giggle, <laughs> I think this is a great. Well, it is though, isn't it? It's a really lovely project. It's making me giggle. Yeah, but it's got that whimsy in it. It's got it that, you know, I just think yeah. it's lovely. Um, Claire says, could you make a few, put numbers in them and make them into skittles? Hello. Oh my good. With a soft fabric ball. I'm there. We love that. I am going to be, I was thinking I'll have a few days off. I don't think I will. I'll be, no. I'll be owling. Yeah. I but did what think a brilliant that. idea. I did think that maybe, I think I would probably make them a little bit smaller because your ball's going to be quite big, isn't it? Right. So then you would put <laughs> right sides, to, <laughs> you'd put right sides together, <laughs> pin it, pin it. Yeah, make good. sure, <laughs> make sure that you line these two up and then uh -huh. you'll sew. Oh, see, if you're not paying attention, you won't know where you've no, got to sew. No, group valves is called. I feel like I need to just bring <laughs> uh, something educational um, in. No. Parliament. Oh, Parliament. I do know that. I do know that. Oh. I do. Um, so, so all the way from the bottom, all the way up, round, down, round, and then stop here. So you have your bottom open. Good. You leave it open. Now, I'm not going to do that. I just want to show you one thing is to make the base. Now, this isn't made um, how you would think it is. <coughs> okay. It's made in two pieces. And I, I'm using these pieces of fabric. They have to be bigger yep. than the base itself. And I'm just going to... Tell me why, tell me why. Oh, that is why one of my favourite films, that is. One of my favourite films. I was driving home Home for Christmas? Night. No. I was listening. No, I was listening to the radio and they were interviewing... Steven Spielberg and the star of the new West Side Story film, which is out next week, and I cannot wait. <gasps> wow. Because that is a musical I can really get on board with. Why are you piecing now, the base with a seam uh, down the middle? Why not just one whole piece? I am using this fabric. Please do not use this. Use scrap fabric for this part. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to sew it together, and then I'm going to unpick it. We've done what? that once today already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop it you <laughs> so I'm going to sew it together but as I say just this is where a plain piece of fabric or some scrap fabric and if you want to use a centimeter seam here yep. then you'll have more to turn back you may find that easier and I have used a very short stitch on here okay which if you again if you want to do a short stitch and then elongate down the center and then short because what we're going to be doing now we're going to be Cutting this out yep. with where that dotted line is, that's where the seam is. Yep. And when you put it in the owl, you, you sew a little bit here and a little bit there, a bit like you do a zip, that you've got the stopper on the zip so yep. that the stitches don't um, go beyond that. And once you've put the actual base in, you then unpick this section, un unpick this section yep. to stuff. Gotcha. Because then you will have a really <coughs> beautiful bottom, Stuart. <laughs> you won't have any creases in your bottom. It's those edges, isn't it? You never get it perfect you if never you do. leave a gap in the side. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Just ordered all three. This is my first oh. project from Sewing Street. That makes me Can't so happy. Can't wait for it to come. Harry, well done in Newport. We are proud <laughs> of you. I my little happy dance. Wendy did a happy <laughs> dance. That's terrific, <laughs> Harry. I'm really pleased. You know, because this is an inspiring project. It's fun. It's kind of free form, you can play with it. It doesn't matter if it's quirky. In fact, I think it's better if it's quirky. Love the rainbow owl, he has just flown into my basket. Oh, Your wow. demonstrations are fantastic. Loving all the tips and the banter between you both. That's from <laughs> Winifred, who's an Alicante in Spain. Whoa. Hey, we're not jealous. Winifred, wow. We've had that and a sausage baguette in MS. I mean, you know, although I did get, look, 
a beautiful cup of tea from Elliot in a knitting mug. I didn't. I think you. I didn't. Well, I know, I know. Um, so I've now got my bottom, you see, I've just shown you. So yeah. that's what it is cut out. And then you pop it, once this is all sewn together, you put it in here and because you haven't got to leave any open no. you can just sew around the whole of it and it makes life so much easier and that is a top tip for anyone that it's got to be on the base yeah do i need to stop talking now right okay no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we've gone over a little bit but that was a delight wendy <laughs> and do you know what you've inspired us all this morning with your project and with your tips and your ideas and your sewing it's been really good fun with a really fun project and thank you for joining us we've got you back in at 11 o'clock haven't we well you might not <laughs> <laughs> will you stay go on no be you might love. not want me to come be back. a love of course we want you to stay i want you to stay for the whole morning oh yes um and that will be at 11 o'clock. That's to make the beautiful quilt that's been hanging behind Wendy. It's an absolutely super one. Beautiful block, beautiful fabrics from Lewis and Irene. We're going to take a little break now and then we'll be back. So go grab yourself a little snack and I'll see you right here in a few minutes. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. sewing street or yarn lane customer no matter how many times you check out in one day you will only pay one postage and packaging so don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out you will only pay one pmp even if you check out multiple times in one day in need of a crafting fix there are so many ways you can watch sewing street and yarn lane Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our program guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. 
Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Stuart Hillard and you have joined us on Sewing Street. It's great to have your company. It's uh, yeah, about 10 past, quarter past 10. Um, it's slightly later than normal, but we had such a fun hour. We just wanted it to carry on with Wendy Orlando there and her wonderful owl doorstops. Now, I just want to let you know that we really are down to the last handful of each of the monochrome, the rainbow and the dusky versions. So if you want to get your kit or you want to get an extra, um, I would be really, really quick and check out your baskets because they are going to be sold out probably before the end of this hour. Now, we're going to start this hour with an exclusive. We've got some fabulous, fabulous panels for making bags. Um, great for gifting presents, great as a sort of an alternative to that kind of gift sack, great way of taking a sort of group of gifts for family maybe to take them all in a bag you can just kind of leave it with them it's a nice little extra present now i'm going to show you each of the four panels on their own to begin with but i'm just going to put it out there don't buy them like that don't buy them individually well you can buy them individually of course but we've got a great deal on buying all four together so Let's start, well, let's start with this one right here, right now, which is HC91. Instantly attracted by the sort of um, fair isle-ness. Oh, oh, this is yummy. Love this. I deliberately don't open panels out before I get to the show if they're new ones, because I like to have the same reaction, or, you know, as seeing it afresh. This is super. So look what you've got. You've got the front and back, or two fronts, of the bag. This one here says, we wish you a Merry Christmas. It's got this really lovely, bold, zigzag background, and then some beautiful baubles, which are beautifully hung. Um, isn't that super? What a great panel. Now, that could make a great front of a bag. Right next to it, you've got your second bag front. I mean, use them however you want to. But this one's got this all-over pattern of Christmas decorations. 
Uh, now you've got these Christmas decorations here with these lovely patterns and then of course here we've got what might well be the back of your bag. I mean you could just use this as front and back and lining but I'd be mixing this and matching this with fabrics in my stash to make four bags out of this panel for $12.99. You could also use, here's a few ideas for handles. I mean, you might want handles, you might not. You could make a little channel, thread some cord through and pull it up so it's a present sack. You could use grommets, you know, like the sort of silver or brass grommets. Maybe do about three and another three on the other and then put cord through as a drawstring or two at the front, two at the back, cord through, knot it, nice big knot and not and have rope handles that would be fun you could also delve into your stash grab a coordinate fabric or canvas we've got some really nice canvases um, on pre-order you could mix those and have nice canvas handles i wouldn't personally i wouldn't bother lining these because they're sort of present sacks they're not meant as throwaway by any means so i would still zigzag the seam allowances inside or i would bind them or even french seam them um, but I just wouldn't line them because it's an unnecessary step that would be wasteful of fabric I think for gifting bags um, that you could still use and use and use so that's the first one $12.99 but like I say I'd hang on and just see because we've got a lovely deal on buying all of them now the next one I'm going to go red and green again this is Elftastic Oh, this is really cute. This is really cute. I like this. I like this. This has got Elf, favourite Christmas film, by the way. Um, and Santa, the big man himself, on a lovely snowflakey background. And then, are you talking to me? <laughs> Joe, our director, just said, that'll do, big fella. <laughs> and then you've got these two alternatives. Now, again, use these panels how you like. What about if you cut this down the middle, okay, into two rectangles, so you've got a front and a back. Let me just twist it around so I can show you what I mean. So if you cut this here and then shift up, so you've got a front and a back, okay, um, side seams, box the bottoms, well, put a zip in as well, and then you've got a zip-topped, bag be really fun as kind of like a Christmas toiletries little bag wouldn't it if you were gifting toiletries or if you've got people coming to stay and you want to do like a little welcome package for their bedroom with some little toiletries inside or maybe something like some little snacks or something like that you know because there's never enough food about a Christmas is there good lord <laughs> But this is really lovely and I think these panels, the ones with the um, Santa Claus and the Elf, are terrific. You could also use these as pillow fronts, couldn't you? Cushion fronts, bobble trim round the outside. Of course, you know about my relationship with bobble trim and Christmas. They're inextricably linked. And again, $12.99 for those. Completely exclusive to us, but still... Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Uh, next one, these are some more blue. A lot of people have blue at Christmas, don't they? This is very lovely. That's very lovely. This is all about special delivery. Now, these are absolutely perfect, aren't they, for making present sacks or tote bags. Super expensive if you buy them. You might spend £10 on each present sack. But twelve ninety nine, and you could eke this out to make four present sacks if you use each section as the front and then delve into your stash to make a back piece of back. Sew strips together, sew odd shapes together to create the back. Create a bit of, you know, random patchwork, a bit of freeform patchwork. They could make little tote bags or pillows, or like I say, each panel could be cut in half, add a zip, add a lining and create like a zippy bag, pencil case even. I mean, not with these big panels, that's too nice. You wouldn't want to cut through the middle of that, but they would make rather lovely pillows as well. How would you use them? $12.99, but I don't want you to buy that panel. 
All right. I have spoken. What? <laughs> Excuse me. I've got a tickle. Um, one final bag panel. Oh, this is lovely. I love the fact that they're all really different as well. They've all got a really, really different look. This one's all about the Christmas house. Look there. The Christmas house. Um, Merry Christmas. And it's a really nice background, isn't it? Red with little snowflakes. It's really jolly and bright. Two different kinds of houses. And then the little houses. And again, front and back linings for one bag or a couple of bags, four bags, present sacks. Now, all the way through, I've been saying, don't buy this panel on its own. And it's for a reason. And the reason is coming up. Because we can do this. Buy all four panels and save 20 pounds. I bet you thought I was going to say you were going to get one of those panels for free, didn't you? 12 99 off, but you're not. You're going to save 20 pounds by buying all four panels together. That's actually, so what does that work out per panel? If you pay 31 96 divided by, we need that lovely lady you emailed in earlier. My mental arithmetic definitely isn't up to the job. $7.99 a panel, there you go. Instead of $12.99 per panel, that's a super saving, isn't it? You'll still get these in time for Christmas. They're a quick make, so what I'm thinking is, you know, have an afternoon or a couple of afternoons of making. You know, thread the sewing machine up with something like a white or an ecru or a tan thread. That'll go with everything. Nice full bobbin. Get your machine all uh, threaded up and away you go. Full size panels. You're getting four units, if you like, on each panel, which gives the opportunity to really create, you know, and use them in different ways. Be creative. You know, the thing I love most about panels is that they offer a quick make if you want to just make it as it is. But they also offer loads of possibilities and there's already some work done for you as well. Um, also, you know, another alternative for handles, get yourself some um, webbing tape, you know, the kind of webbing handles. We sell it, I think, by the meter maybe or half meter on, on Sewing Street, don't we? You could use that for handles and that would be super quick and easy. Uh, really nice quick finish. And remember, I wouldn't bother lining them. Sew them up, zigzag over your seam allowance or overlock if you've an overlocker, um, and jobs are good. £20 saving, that's terrific. Now, almost half the stock of that is gone. I'm just wondering, did you all wait and while I was saying, don't buy this, don't buy this, you waited, good. Excellent, I'm glad, thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't make you wait for nothing. £20 saving is terrific, isn't it? You're saving £5 per panel. And I really could, could have and should have done the mental arithmetic there. Now, I know a lot of you are still waiting to do your Christmas makes. Um, I don't know if you like to sort of, you know, feel the fear on Christmas Eve. <laughs> feel that pressure. But um, it's still time. There's absolutely still time. And if you're not doing handmade gifts, and I only do a few handmade gifts, I don't make many handmade gifts, I'll be honest with you. Um, but I do like a little uh, tote bag to gift or some kind of little, you know, I'll make the packaging if you like. So I might line a basket and create a little something like that. I like, that's a nice little handmade touch. Or putting things in a handmade bag. Another thing, of course, you know, we often take a bottle, don't we? Or some chockies or something like that along to, um, you know, family or friends who've invited us around. You could use these to create things like bottle bags or carriers or some kind of dress up. You could also use these for little wall hangings. I mean, I think this one in particular would make the most lovely little wall hangings, wouldn't it? couple of little wall hangings, just almost like a banner, like a little flag to hang up on the wall or hang up on the front door just to really get everybody excited about Christmas Day. Absolutely lovely. There have been a lot of those sort of postal 
motifs this year, haven't they, on fabrics. I've seen that on Riley Blake, I've seen that on Moda, of course on our exclusive panel here as well. Even though I must admit I bought some stamps the other day and I winced at the price of actually sending things through the post. I shall definitely be reining myself in with Christmas cards this year at that sort of money. <laughs> there is less than 10 of that bundle left now. You're making a £20 saving, remember. It's £5 off each panel. £12.99 drops down to £7.99, but only when you buy all four panels together. But that, remember, gives you the options of making up to 16 bags mixed with your stash, or zippy bags, or little, all sorts, cushions. Be creative. Have some fun. Now, uh, I'm going to need to move and get it if that's all right um, I'm just gonna get it'll be worth the wait believe me I'm coming back I'm coming oh okay it was the night before Christmas it was the snowy night before Christmas and all through the quiet sleepy house no one was stirring not even a mouse how cute it's a panel to create a soft book and Boy, it's a page turner. I've been riveted to this all morning. I'm not going to show you how it ends because I think that would be wrong. But I do love a soft fabric book. They're a fun make. They're a great, I mean, they're lovely. When children get to that age where you can read together or they can read by themselves or just share a book, which goodness me is as early as you can, um, a soft book like this is a really lovely thing to make. It's a very special sort of Christmas Eve gift, isn't it? If you're visiting grandchildren Christmas Eve, or godchildren, or any children, your children, um, or you want to make a little something for the neighbours, this is a really sweet make. Now, it's $14.99. It, well, it's an afternoon make, uh, but it's the kind of thing that really gets kept. <coughs> I love the fact that on the front there's even a little space here that says this book belongs to and you can write the recipient's name and it could be, you know, um, the Smith family um, or it could be, you could just put someone special, you know, if you want to keep it nice and open or you could put Stuart. Personally, that's what I'd put. All of your pages are all connected. You just need a bit of H640 to put this together. Now, are there instructions or? No, this is it. OK, OK. So essentially, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial, which would be what you're going to do is you're going to. So you know the order of the story. <coughs> OK, you're going to get that page, that double page, and the double page that goes behind it, you're going to lay those two rectangles right sides together with a piece of batting on the back. You're then going to sew around the outside edge but leave a gap for turning. Here are the gaps down here. Turn it through to the right side, turn that little opening under and hand stitch it closed and that's one double page. You're going to make three double pages like that. And obviously, the outer cover is going to be um, this section here. And then it's also going to be the page which is your first and last page of the book, which is this one right here. OK, so they're actually numbered front and back in a cover page one. OK, so you've got that assistance there. So you just make those three lots of double pages up, layer them together like so, and then you just need to stitch through to hold all the pages together. And I would start here, reverse back, stitch down and reverse back and then just trim your threads. It's completely exclusive to Sewing Street. It's almost time for Christmas, so 
just to give you an extra reason to buy, we're going to drop the price. And we're going to drop the price to $8.99. And that makes it a real have a go price. And also something that if you wanted to get two panels so that you can gift, you know, siblings their own copy each, you can. You absolutely can. You're saving six pounds per panel. You're saving way more than your PNP. If you've already bought something today, you're not even going to pay that either. It's a nice project, you know, because you don't need much um, H640 or quilt batting. You could sew the book together with kids. You could get together and do a little bit of sewing. You could add a few embellishments. That would be fun. I think a little bell, a tiny bell would be really cute to add. So you've got a little jingle, yeah? Can, yeah, the sort of jingle, if you believe, or, or even that sort of, you know, can you hear Santa's bell ringing? He's coming. It's just lovely. I love it. Loads of you are checking out. Don't worry if you checked out before we dropped the price, by the way. The price will get dropped. You'll get charged the right amount, $8.99. That price is only until midnight, though. So, um, you know, don't wait till tomorrow. Otherwise, you'll be charged $14.99, which is worth it. But I'd much rather you paid $8.99. Much rather. <laughs> now, um, I launched a brand new bag panel for winter, my winter tote bag, just about a week and or so. Uh, of the title, Let It So, Let It So, Let It So, 29th of December, November, sorry, 29th of December, living sometime in the future. We just have a handful of these panels left, just a handful. We did print a lot of these and a lot of you bought them and thank you so much. I'll show you the panel itself. If I hold it up, you can see what you've got is you've got the back panel, which is this one right here. So this could be the front or the back of the bag, but this is the outer panel. And then you've got the same image, but with a curve cut through. And this is going to create a curved outer pocket. So you've got a massive outer pocket to pop stuff in, as well as the inside of your bag. It doesn't interrupt the flow of the design at all. And also on the 29th of November, I did a demo and showed you how to create this pocket, lined pocket with under stitching along that curve so that there isn't even a line of stitching to interrupt the flow of the design. Now on the other side of your bag, you've got a different design, but still of the let it sew variety. Because that's, that's my attitude this time of year. The weather can do what it likes. Just let it sew. Uh, this one is an embroidery hoop with all lovely sewing tools around it and a beautiful poinsettia there. I can never keep poinsettias alive, so I'd much rather have them on fabric. And then you've got that big curved pocket again. Now you've also on this panel got your shoulder straps, okay, your handles. You've got extra tabs. If you wanted to add D rings, rectangular rings, just to extend that, that strap, Okay, you could add these with rings. Okay, you've also got an inner security pocket here. So you pop a zip through there, add it to the backing and, and add this. You've got facings as well for the inside top of the bag. Now, when I was doing the demo for this panel with Rebecca Reed, I fluffed it a bit. <laughs> I confused myself. It's, it rarely happens to me, but I just had this mental block about which way around things should go. So what I actually did was, on my Instagram, Stuart Hillard makes, and on my Facebook as well, Stuart Hillard, I've done, it's only like two or three pictures, just to show you how you put that um, security pocket together. Because just on the day, I don't know what it was, I think Rebecca Reed was winking at me. I'm going to blame her. It wasn't her at all, it was just me. I could, just couldn't remember which way around to put them. Anyway, that's all on, on my Instagram and Facebook. Um, so it's a lovely big panel. Did we see the actual bag? Let me show you the bag. The bag's a doozy, it's lovely. Um, so it's a nice big tote bag. You've got loads of space inside, but you've also got big pockets on the outside. You can probably just about see the curve of the outer pocket there. But I've designed this so that really it's imperceptible. Um, so it doesn't interrupt that lovely image of the embroidery hoop on one side. There you can see that pocket. 
And then on the other side, it's the old fashioned sewing machine. My mum had a sewing machine exactly like this when I was a child, black with the gold paint, the hand cranked wheel on the side that my mum would sit and make curtains and cushions and fancy dress outfits. She once dressed me up as one of the Bay City Rollers, but that's another story. Just a handful left. Our producer and director now are furiously searching for who are the Bay City Rollers because they're, I've, got, I've got milk older than them. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, there's just a handful of those panels left, so there's plenty of time to make them before Christmas. Remember, it's a bag for all through the winter. It's just about celebrating the season and enjoying your sewing. Now, let's look. This is a beautiful, beautiful quilt kit from a, one of the most respected designers and artists in the quilting world, Valerie Wells. You might have heard of Valerie Wells. You might have heard of her mum, Jean Wells. I bet you've heard of the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show in America. Lots of British quilters want to visit the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show one day. Jean Wells started that show and Valerie Wells is her daughter. They're both incredible quilters and um, Valerie is the most amazing quilt fabric designer as well. Now, this is a really big quilt, so I need a little able assistance. There we go. This is really beautiful. I've been, I've been looking at this in uh, pictures all morning. It's so beautiful. It's so much more beautiful up close and personal. It's like a huge kind of beautiful blossom with a frame behind it. It's all pieced, there's no applique. Um, absolutely lovely. Let me just pull up the bottom as well so you can see the fabrics down there as well. How stunning is that? The border fabric is absolutely gorgeous too. Hey Kat, really lovely that. Hiya, and run. There you go. Oh, such a beautiful quilt. Now. Price-wise, £199.99. There are split pays, 66 66 But today we're feeling all lovely and, and gifty and, and, and knocking money off -y. So we're going to drop that price by £40 and we're going to make it £159.99. Now, you get a huge amount of fabric in here. It was demoed on Monday with Alison Marion, you get a huge amount of fabric, all these beautiful fabrics. Um, they're a gentle curve, so I'm thinking confident beginner. They're a beautiful modern palette. Re that's a stunning fabric, isn't it? Um, what Valerie Wells, if you've not heard of Valerie Wells before, you want to see more of her work, have a look at her Instagram because she does loads of block printing. She's really into block printing fabric. And these fabrics are actually um, kind of reproductions, if you like, of her hand block printed fabrics. So they have that wonderful layered look. They're really gorgeous. They're all made by Free Spirit, who are absolute world leaders um, in beautiful fabric. You get a huge amount of this background fabric as well, which really helps to um, give space for these beautiful prints to shine so that you can really see the designs as well. <coughs> so all of your piecing and your hard work is not going to get lost in a busy background. Um, I think the flat shot of the quilt is absolutely stunning. It is such a beautiful quilt. Look at that. And this is huge. It's Absolutely huge. It's over two metres each way. Well, it's 199 centimetres by 199 centimetres. Ah, you've got it at 203. Okay. It really showcases those prints, doesn't it? And actually, even though um, kind of up close and personal, those prints are quite modern and bold, when you look at the quilt as a whole in a shot like that, 
actually you could be forgiven for thinking those were um, liberty prints or like soft mode of florals or something like that. So the overall look, actually I think that's partly because of the cream background, is still quite calm, quite, um, there's a quietness to it as well as a boldness. It's really pretty. You can watch a full demo of that if you look back at Monday's show with Alison Marion. I'm just going to pop that. was 11 o'clock. Right. Let's go over this away. Come on. Let's do some gnomes. Let's do some gnomes. Now, these, I think, were launched by... Be Rebecca, weren't they? Rebecca Reed, Because Charlie, my husband, was watching this show and couldn't stop laughing um, about how cute and fun these gnomes were. Um, so I might have to buy a set of these for him. Let's start with Mr. Gnome. Mr. Gnome is actually called Bjorn, isn't he? He's called Bjorn. Bjorn and Son. I'm going to get and son. Now, and son is obviously, you know, older than you think because he's got quite a quite a hefty moustache. OK, so um, I'm imagining that gnomes have a kind of growth spurt as they get sort of middle aged, perhaps. Really cute, aren't they? What you're getting here is. Oh. Ah, you're getting instructions. Oh, so are you getting the all three colourways, the grey and the blue? The grey and the blue, so not the red. Okay, right, got you. Right, wow, this is a great b bundle then. So for twenty nine ninety eight, you're getting the uh, kind of blue and green tartan version of Mr. Gnome. So that's Bjorn and son, Benny. <laughs> Benny and Bjorn, jolly good, excellent. I've got baby goats called Benny and Bjorn, so you get them to make those. But then you're also getting the panel to make Mr. Gnome and Son in the grey colourway, which I'm just going to show you what that grey colourway looks like. It's Now this is a daughter one, but you get the idea, it's this colourway of fabric. So really cute, kind of grey, snowflakes, a little bit kind of fair isle looking, really cute. So you get the grey panel, you get the green and blue panel, and you also get Bjorn and Son instructions, all right, for $29.98. These have got polythene pellets in the bottom so that they could be used as, you know, a doorstop on the larger one. You could also use them sitting on the shelves. This could be your own elf on the shelf. It could be a gnome in your home. You know, um, absolutely fab. Really fun, those. <coughs> now, we also have a red version, which you can buy on its own. And this is for Benny and Bjorn, the gnomes. I'll just open this out. You also get the set of instructions for how to make this up for $19.99. Now, this one was brand new this year. This was a new colourway that was introduced. And what you can see there is that you're getting all of the elements that you will need to make both the large gnome, so Mr. Gnome, and also to make the little gnome as well. Um, and we've said, you know, they're like father and son, but equally they could just be large and small. Uh, really, really cute these, aren't they? Great fun to make. Well, these ones have got big moustaches, so I'm thinking that they are definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Love it. What a fun project. Well, we had great fun in the last hour with Wendy Orlando and her owl panel. And these have that kind of similar feel, don't they? Because you could make them as doorstops. You could make them as sort of decorator dolls. You could have them sitting on a shelf. You could have them, um, you know, in the windowsill to kind of bring a bit of Christmas cheer. I think those are great. Now, we also have Mrs. Gnome. I think is she called Frida? Well, I think the baby perhaps should be called um, Agneta, 
because it's Agnetta and Annafrid, isn't it, from ABBA. And again, I have um, goats called Agnetta and Annafrid. <laughs> now, this is the grey version. I'm just going to move that out of the way so that she can see. Now, you're getting the grey in this bundle, and you're also getting the green and blue tartan version, plus you're also getting your full instructions on how to make up your panel. So you get enough fabric there to make two of the large, so one in the grey, one in the green, and then two of the small, one grey, one green, and as I say, you get full instructions. So that's Mrs Gnome. Or again, if you want the red version and you want just a one panel, then you can also get that. So that's the red panel. You get the panel itself to make mum and daughter. You also get the instructions as well for 1999. Hmm? Oh, is she? There she is. Ah, oh, really cute. Really cute. There's. There she is. <laughs> really cute, love the hat. You just make a little pom-pom uh, to go on the end there. Or you could put a bell, that would be quite fun. Love that the legs kind of dangle, so it's really asking to be put on a shelf, isn't it really? It's sort of decorated, sort of sitting on the edge of the shelf. Love these little plaits as well. Very, very cute indeed. How nice is that? Really lovely. So that's Mrs. Gnome, and you also get, of course, um, the instructions and the sections on your panel to make her daughter for nineteen ninety nine. So that's the red panel that you can buy on its own. Let me pop this back up here. Now, don't forget, in the next hour, we have got uh, Wendy coming back and she's going to show us this beautiful quilt that I've got hanging behind me. It's sensational. It's a brand new quilt from Lewis and Irene. The price is amazing. It's a really, really good sized quilt. Uh, it's great piecing, easy to piece. You could be done quilt as you go because of the sashing between the squares. It's a brand new project. You're getting all the fabric for the quilt top and the binding included. The price is fabulous really fabulous. Make sure that you check out if you've got that in your basket in pre-order. It's very, very popular so far, really popular. So you might want to jump ahead and pre-order that one, but we'll have full demos from Wendy at 11. Now, Amber makes panels. Now these are the Totally Totes. Now I remember I was here launching these with Rebecca Reed. There are three different versions. We're going to start off with autumn. Now, the concept, the concept of the totally tote, uh, <coughs> excuse me, bag and panel, is to have everything on one panel that you need to make the full tote bag. So, the um, front, the back, the lining, the straps. And even better, you've even got the fabric to create a zipped purse, like a little zipped uh, pouch as well. Now, what's lovely about this bag, and I hope we've got some images to show you the finished bags as well, is the top and bottom are separate pieces. You sew these together, which creates a lovely base to the bag. This is a gorgeous kind of faux linen look. And then you've got the image of the vase of flowers, gorgeous kind of autumn shades of roses uh, in the top. So you've got, there's the finished bag, and there next to it is the finished zip top purse. So literally all you need to add to that is a zip, just a zip in a colour of your choice. You've absolutely everything else on this panel, including the handles and the linings. It's fabulous, isn't it? And not a plain lining. Look at the lining fabric. It's this gorgeous rose. How fabulous. I, I think, I'd be honest with you, I'd be inclined to make a second bag out of the lining and add a solid for the lining, but that's just me. Um, you're getting full instructions as well. So your full instructions are right here. And... Um, Nice and detailed, pictures there. Um, inside the bag, now 
I don't know if you can just see this, but you've actually got what we call a letterbox zip. Okay, which add if you want to, don't add it if you don't want to, but you've got full instructions on how to create this letterbox zip that goes inside your tote bag. So it really is more than just a standard tote bag. You can really sort of add something extra if you want, learn a new skill. You've got that full tutorial and it does look terrific. Really, really lovely, this bag. There's the finished sample. There's the finished little zip topped purse as well. Remember, the only thing you'll need to add is a zip. Um, Rebecca hadn't put anything inside it, so there's no H640, there's no interfacing. Now, what I discovered, what we discovered on the show was that you can actually fold the tote bag up and then you can put it inside the zip bag and do the zip up. So if you want a bag that you can pop in your handbag or something like that so you can carry it around and then have a tote bag handy, that will work beautifully. So that's the autumn version. Now, the next version that we've got is called winter. Now, this could be made into the bag, of course, but it could also be made into cushions for Christmas or winter. This one features such a pretty village scene. And I'm going to open it out because I want you to see the front and the back. Because this is different on the front and back, and it's the only one that has that. It has the village in the daytime, and it has the village at night. I think that's lovely for a front and back. The faux linen base of the bag uh, is in this beautiful kind of indigo denim blue. You've got a uh, very, very fancy lining, which features more images of that snow-capped village. And then you've got your facings, you've got your um, straps. I love also, let me just show you this fun little detail. <coughs> this is the inside lining of the zipped pocket that's inside the bag. You know that uh, letterbox zip pocket? And it says secret things. So when you open your zip and look inside, it says secret things. Mine would probably be some kind of sweets in the bottom. They would be my secret things. Don't forget also you get the fabric to create a coordinating zip top pouch. All you need to do is add a zip. You've got the lining for that little pouch as well. Isn't that cute? That would also make a wonderful gifting bag if you've made or uh, bought some presents for a family or friends and you want to put it in a really special bag that would be gorgeous and then they can keep the bag, do their winter shopping, grocery shopping. Splendid, isn't it? And I love the concept of having absolutely everything you need on one panel. You don't actually need to add anything other than obviously thread and for the zip pouch you need a zip. Now finally, our last totally tote panel and instructions is the Robin. Um, I think I think, if I'm right, the robin is the nation's favourite bird. I think so. I absolutely, I think I love this one the best. I love the duck egg blue or the robin's egg blue. I think it's probably more correct. Um, just look at this lovely image that you've got front and back. How beautiful is that? What really brings this to life for me are these pinky red berries. They just lift the whole image and it looks like a sort of watercolour painting of a robin. <coughs> it's very soft and gentle, isn't it? And robins are that sort of, I think what's lovely about them, why we love them so much, is they're a pretty little bird that visits our garden even in the winter. And it just gives us that sort of hope that maybe a lot of the other birds have flown away, but they will be back. And this is our little winter visitor in the garden. I know I love seeing the robins out in the garden. You've got a duck egg blue or robin egg blue um, faux linen base. Beautiful lining. Again, you could use that for a second outer bag if you wanted to supplement. No space is wasted on these panels, by the way. Look, you've even got a little images down here and then you've got your handles your secret things pocket lining and your outer outer pocket you've got um even look at this so for the zip ends on the small case 
we like, I like, um, Rebecca likes to put zip ends on the zip. You've even got those right here. Just lovely attention to detail. You've got some labels. This bag belongs to and some other little name labels that you can put inside your bag. It really is a beautiful quality panel, this. Great instructions as well that you get with your Totally Tote bag panel. That's going to sew up beautifully, make a really gorgeous bag, something to cherish. Uh, so many things in this hour are exclusive to us here at Sewing Street. You really are tuned into the very best channel. You get so many exclusive offers. We are very, very lucky here. Now then, what should we look at next? Ah, we've got one last message. Oh, I didn't know that. The and on our web messages wasn't working. Hi guys, this is a test from IT and happy Wednesday. Ah, so the ampersand is finally working. Thank you, Matt. That is a joyous day. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to a break now. When we come back, we're going to have Wendy Orlando with us. She's going to be talking us through and showing us how to make this beautiful quilt behind me in two different fabric colorways. So join me after the break. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Hello, my name's Rebecca Harrison. Uh, my background is in theatre costume, so I've made uh, costumes for film, TV and theatre. Um, I began to sew when I was at school, in primary school, and I also uh, did a lot of sewing with my mum at home. Um, one of the first things that I ever made um, was this little mouse, um, and I hand sewed her at primary school. I think I was eight or nine. Um, when I did her, um, and I treasure her. She's, uh, she, she's, I just love her. Her, her head's, her stuffing's gone in her head, so she's a bit wobbly. Um, my favourite things to sew are corsets. Um, probably because of my uh, period background, um, but I just love them. I've got one here. Um, I love the structure of them, um, the shape the bones make. I, I just think they're beautiful. Um, and the fact that through the ages they've changed to uh, make women's shape different um, and I find that really fascinating. Um, my claim to fame is um, because I've obviously uh, doing costumes for film and theatre I've been lucky enough to meet um, a lot of famous people so um, I've met people like uh, Dame Judi Dench, uh, Kate Winslet, uh, Juliette Binoche uh, lots, oh gosh, lots and lots of people, lots more than I can probably, I haven't got time to say them all. Um, but yeah, just, and, and all around the building where I used to work um, in London, you'd see lot, lots of people, Christopher Lee, Sir Richard Attenborough, um, yeah, just lo lots and lots of people. Um, so it was, it was really lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I feel very privileged to do what I do. I love my job and I'm very lucky that I get to do it every day. Um, and I really enjoy being on Sewing Street and uh, demonstrating um, how to make things and um, hopefully inspire you uh, to, get, to get sewing. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Keep up 
up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 44 33. Hi, welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard and this hour we've got the wonderful Wendy Orlando back for an hour of gorgeous quilt making with a beautiful new range from Lewis and Irene. This is so cosy, so warm, so deliciously snug. The design itself is a beauty. It's a classic, um, easy to piece, beginner friendly, quilt as you go friendly. It's got a gorgeous ombre border and even better, there are two different colorways to choose from. They both have similar tones, but have quite a different look. But the wait till you see the price. Wait till you see the price. Now then, this quilt is designed by Sally Ablett, who I know her designs very, very well. She's a fantastic quilt designer. She does a wonderful job at creating quilts that are easy to piece, fun to piece, really make the best of the fabric. Uh, you'll love this. Uh, this price is incredible. Look, £54.99 and the finished quilt, this is enough fabric to make the whole of the quilt top and the binding and I asked Wendy what were you like for leftovers and she said oh yeah I did have a few bits and bits yeah I had some leftover fabric which we always love that we could make up into a pillow or two the quilt itself is 48 inches square so it's a great throw size a great lap quilt size as well it would also top a bed beautifully and I'd be using that extra fabric to make a couple of cushions beautifully dressed bed now let's have a look at the actual fabrics. This is the first colourway I'm going to show you. So this has got the light ombre background. It's got like a nice warm tone to the sashing. That's this gorgeous. Look at this fabric here. It's like wood. Isn't that lovely? I mean, that is fab. You get half a metre of that fabric absolutely brilliant. Now bumbleberries, absolutely beautiful. You get half a metre of that. That's a Lewis and Irene classic and they're always bringing out new colours which I love, love, love. Then this fabric here, we get plenty of that, a metre of this fabric and um, a winter nap it's called. Now you know me, I love a bear and this is just gorgeous. You've got um, uh, maybe Papa or Mama Bear and the baby bear there. You've got the little foxes curled up having a sleep. You've got the hedgehogs. I don't think they're asleep actually. I think they're having a little bit of a chat. Yeah, they're those ones that you know like go and they're supposed to be going to sleep but they just end up talking till two in the morning. But ever so cute, these beautiful little trees, floating autumn leaves. It has got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, it's got an autumny, cosy autumn feel. And of course, we are into winter now, still gorgeous and cosy. But look, we're going to have autumn next year too. These are quilts you're going to get out year after year after year. You get a whole metre of that fabric. Then, this is adorable, absolutely adorable. We get half a metre of this one, all snuggled down. 
foxes, the dormouse, <coughs> the little baby bear and the hedgehog, swirling autumnal leaves all around them, ever so cute. The quality of the fabric is gorgeous. It is so finely woven, high thread count, really soft and supple, not stiff, but beautiful quality. Okay, it's really, really lovely. Lewis and Irene are really well known now for creating beautiful quality fabrics with often with a kind of nature inspired theme. So lots of animals, lots of flora, fauna. We saw those lovely peacocks, remember, in the first hour with Wintertide. Uh, this one, this is my favourite. This is my favourite print. This is a clever one because on the surface it looks like little scattered leaves. But actually, there's more to this fabric than meets the eye when you have a closer look. So, for example, I love the fact that you've got these sycamore um, helicopters. And we call these, are the, these are sycamore, aren't they, from sycamore? Little, absolutely lovely. Yeah, I'm um, just thinking here. And then you've got little bare face. I'm trying to find my hand. Oh, look, there we go. There's a little, little sleepy fox there. You've got the little tiny mushroom, well, fungi, fungi. Uh, you've got the little helicopters. They're from Sycamore, aren't they? Um, over here, you've got, I think these are maybe like little cobnets. And you've got acorns. I mean, it really is just a delightful, and of course, the little bear space. Very cute. And I love that rich, deep chocolate brown background. Now you get half a metre of that. Getting a lot of fabric in this kit, aren't you? For $54.99. And remember, that's enough to create your quilt top, your binding, and leftovers enough to create some cushions. Um, you just need to find the background. Now, last fabric, this is absolutely amazing. You get a metre of this fabric. I want 10 metres of this fabric, please, because I can think of so many creative ways. We don't have any of this fabric on its own, so get the metre in the pack and cut your border out as carefully as you can. <laughs> How lovely is this? This is this gorgeous ombre effect. The whole range is called a winter nap, which I think is adorable. But I just love this ombre shading from greens through russety reds, golds, yellows and this bright bright green it is just fabulous on a gold background this is what you use for the border now wendy's also used this fabric for the binding but in the instructions you have enough of this gold to bind the quilt with but you know you can choose oh, sorry beg your pardon i'm picking from the wrong bundle it's this orange bumbleberries okay for your binding so you get all of that fabric, you get your free instructions as well. So you get those instructions all included, $54.99. I'll show you the pattern as well while we're here. That's a super bundle of fabric. So here's your pattern that you're getting. Um, got a nice layout diagram on the front. This is super useful. I mean, I know a, a lifestyle shot is lovely, but a good flat shot of a quilt is just essential. Uh, you've got your key of your fabrics, how to cut them, how to piece them and make them up into rows, and then final instructions on putting them together. As I say, because you've got this sashing in between the blocks, you could adapt this quilt pattern for quilt as you go. So if you like quilt as you go, ideal candidate. The block itself is often called a square in a square or, or um, a, called an economy block, an economy block, because it uses triangles of different sizes in a kind of no scrap will be wasted kind of way. I like that like a bit of economy, don't we? And we certainly like to use our scraps. There she is. Hey, Wendy, how are you? I'm fine. Good. I've had coffee. I'm even better. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Wendy, what did you think when you got the quilt kit? I absolutely, I, I just love fabric anyway, yeah. but this is gorgeous. Look at this. Isn't it splendid? How beautiful is that? Yeah, it's a stunning quilt. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it's achievable too, isn't it? Nine blocks, sashings and a border, you're done. 
Uh, as, as you know, we are sometimes a little bit tight for time when yep. we make things, and this was a really quick make. But it's also something that you can make maybe one or two blocks a night and just take your time over it. You don't need to rush, but it did come together really, really quickly, this one. Yeah, beautiful. Um, now, we've got a second colourway. This is the colourway that's been made up into the quilt that's hanging behind Wendy. So if you love that colourway with the dark ombre border and those lovely rich fabrics in the, this is the one, okay? Again, $54.99. I'm going to show you the fabrics that you've got in this kit. So you've got the gold bumble bearers, half a metre of that. So you'll use that for the binding, although Wendy had enough of this border fabric for the binding as well. So you could keep that back and use it for something else. So you've got half a metre of that. You've got the light. This is kind of like... Um, lime washed uh, floorboards isn't it absolutely lovely this is that wood effect okay then you've got one meter of the main print which features those sleepy animals very very cute uh, in amongst the trees and the little mushrooms it's really lovely it's whimsical it's it's not cartoony it's whimsical. It's really lovely. Um, you get a metre of that fabric. Then this one, very, very cute. This might be my favourite fabric out of the entire collection because you know me in orange fabrics. How cute is that? Um, and I love the fact with this that it's really not directional, is it? Curled up foxes, little bears, the dormouse too. They look like they're just all sort of bedded down together, don't they? Having a snooze. Dormice are so rare these days, aren't they? Really, really endangered, I think. You get half a metre of that. I love the fact that we've got that sort of lovely mixture of animals too. Um, this is a beauty. This is that one that looks on the f on first look as if it's just little leaves, which would be pretty. But actually, you've got little toadstools. You've got leaves, you've got sycamore helicopters, hedgehogs, little bears' faces, conkers. Look at the conker. Now, normally I like a game of conkers, Wendy, oh, but yes. I didn't this year. I don't know oh, why. Okay. Autumn came and went mm. in about 10 days, didn't That's it? That's what it was. We went straight from mm. summer to winter, I think, this year. So, no conkers this year. And then finally, your border print. You get half a metre of this. Wendy found this enough for the border and the binding. This is that dark ombre. Now, I'm going to open this out so you can see loads of this fabric. How, I mean, sumptuous, glowy, lit from behind fabric. That really excites me. Really excites me. Um. Now, if you wanted to make two matching but not matching quilts, maybe you've got two single beds and you want a topper for each, you could go for one of each kit because they absolutely go together, but they are subtly different. The colour of the, the, the border, the colours within the blocks, but they all blend together so beautifully. And remember, of course, you're getting full instructions. Fifty-four ninety-nine. It's. Uh, I would. I would see this as a weekend project to make the top. It's a busy weekend, busy weekend, but um, a weekend project to make those blocks and add the borders. Now, mm. Wendy, show us. Before we start, what what's we the difference between a dormouse and a field mouse? Then, when you said dormouse, is there a difference? Um, mm, I, yeah, I think, now, there is. I think there is. The <laughs> dormouse actually was introduced to this country by the Romans, wasn't Whoa. it? Oh. Mm, I believe so, the Roman invaders. Now this is another one of those projects that look a lot more complicated than they actually are. Okay. Um, these are the two colourways for this quilt and I love these because I think in the, the one that's behind me you have the cream here, yep. but this one's got the darker colour and mm. it draws you into that square, doesn't it? And um, I love that rich mm. brown uh, print with the leaves and the conkers and little animals, it's gorgeous. And that's got the, that almost like a honey, caramelly yeah. colour. It's really it? warm. It's gorgeous. Mm. So that's the colourway, they're the two colourways, and then that would be the border. 
Beautiful. Now, when you're cutting these out, um, if you need to cut it on the width of fabric, it will say WOF. Mm -hmm. So you do need to take that into consideration. I was just looking at the instructions and it doesn't tell you whether to cut this out on width of fabric or not. Now, unfortunately, I've cut mine out so I can't show. But on this one, if you cut them across the width of fabric, you're going to get a little bit of each colour. However, if you cut them down the length of the fabric, then you can almost kind of pick the colours that you want, don't you? Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, so... So, so the quilt as it's shown, the strips have been cut mm -hmm. this away from selvage to selvage, so you get that blending of different colours. Um, and you didn't have to join. I didn't have to join for the top and the bottom. Yep. However, I did have to for... Oh, oh you had yes. join on the... Yeah. Yes. Um, I th what Top did, and bottom. Hang on a minute. Did I join? I might not have even had to with this one. I made this a little while ago. No, I think I don't think no. I had to. I think it was that wide. Oh, because how wide is it? 46. Then it should have had a join. Well, the quilt's 48. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it should have had a join, but I can't feel one. Mm. <laughs> I, okay. I, dis I disguised it that well, you see. Mm, absolutely. Well, but um, you can also, if you wanted to, I guess, you could cut your strips going this away. Oh, I found it. I found it. And you <laughs> could then, there is a join. There is you a join. You could then <laughs> uh, choose the colourway more, I guess. But you'd have to see how you got on with the fabric. I mean, I always think if you follow the instructions, then you've got enough but fabric that for that one everything. doesn't say, that's what I was just checking. It didn't say with the fabric when you right. cut the border out. So I kind of guess that it just tells you how much to cut out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking that they maybe think that you can do it whichever way you want it. Yeah, sure. But yes, if there is ever a width of fabric, always follow that because it's it's done for a reason and normally when you cut width of fabric you then have to sub cut uh, smaller pieces first thing we're going to do and i've done most of them but i just want to show you that um, how to cut out something like that's got maybe three quarters on it because <coughs> we need to cut a three quarter just going to press that and it's always do you I always press my fabric before I do anything absolutely and I always best press my fabric just because do you pre-wash your fabrics for quilts no you don't look guilty <laughs> I don't I never know if there's a right or wrong way so people if I was making this where it's all in the same collection then no I wouldn't mm. because it is the same collection mm. however if I'm making from my stash mm -hmm. I have been guilty in the past of making something and then something hasn't behaved when okay. I've washed it yeah. and it shrunk fair enough fair but enough if it was all of the same collection like this one mm -hmm. then I wouldn't yeah now I'm going to cut I need a four and three quarter square so I'm going to get my my ruler out so is this for the center of the this is for on point Square yes. square. Oh, is that what you call it? An on point square. On point. I'm learning so much. Because uh -huh. as you know, I'm not a quilter. <laughs> well, this is amazing. Now, Wendy, when Wendy came in this morning and showed me this quilt, almost the very first thing she said to me was, I'm not a quilter. So I think you'll find you are actually, Wendy, <laughs> looking at your work. But I think that's really <laughs> encouraging because the piecing, the quilting, the binding, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Mm. If you I mean, at the end of the day, if you need to watch some YouTube videos for how to do a binding, they're there. If you need yeah. to re-watch a programme to see how to cut out four and three quarter inch square, our demos are here. We support you. YouTube is a great resource too. Lots yeah. of us have our channels as well where we show how to do things like add some machine quilting, do quilt as you go, that sort of thing. And I really don't want to say if I can do it, anyone can, because I... I, I'm very confident around a machine, you know, that, mm -hmm. that works for me, I don't work for my machine. But I am confident around material, however, I wasn't confident around quilt making and I thought, I can't do things like that. But as I've followed with my quilting journey over sure. um, Sewing Street and now I've made that and I'm, yeah. I'm so chuffed because as I turned it over and I went, there's no bobbling on the back, there's no puckering. Looks great. Um, because it was just a pleasure to make and it was very, very easy. Mm. Um, so I'm going to cut out a four and three quarters square. I'm going to, sorry, I need to press that little bit of my fabric. Claire says, I love Wendy's demonstrations. Oh. She explains things so clearly, and you do. Oh. Terrific. <laughs> Unless my mouth gets in a muddle, that happens sometimes. And then, <laughs> you know, like when your brain knows what it wants to say, but sometimes the mouth doesn't behave. For sure. <laughs> um, I'm going to, first of all, as always, don't ever 
um, take it for granted that the edge is going to be straight. I do have the salvage here anyway, so I am going to be cutting that off. So I want a nice clean edge to work from. And because I'm a lefty, I have my, I cut on the left, but I measure from the right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to place, I need four and three quarters. So on these rulers, these are amazing because you've got the halves and the holes. Now, when I'm doing anything three quarters or a quarter, I always go along the hole mark. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to place it on the five and then I'm going to bring it back to the quarter mark here. So you've got eight marks which represent eights on these rulers. So every other one is a quarter. So I'm going to bring that back to my four and three quarter and I'm going to trim that off. I think that's such a great tip to go up mm -hmm. and then bring it back. I, logically, it may, I, can, I understand it a little bit I more if I do that, so whereas that. I try and find it. If I take it, then I know it's definitely going to be right. Mm -hmm. um, so then I turn it round and I now know that this, these two edges are perfect. So I'm going to, when I line it up this time, I am going to trim it off again because I can see that that's wavy. But this time I'm going to place one of the solid lines along my fabric, the bottom of my fabric, so that when I now trim this edge, I know that I've created a perfect right angle in that mm -hmm. corner. I'm going to turn it round because as I say, I cut from, I measure from the right and cut from the left. I'm going to offer it up to the five but then I'm just going to drag it a quarter of an inch in. Now this time, I have got a right angle because I know this is straight and this is straight. So I've got my th four and three quarters there and then I've got my fabric along that line. Perfect. So I know that I'm going to get a perfect square. And it's that precision, Wendy, that shines through in your finished quilt. Because if you press your fabric, especially with best press before you start cutting, if you cut really accurately with a nice sharp blade and you, you measure accurately, you, you know, you're already halfway there, aren't you? You know, and, and although I will double my fabrics and cut two layers at a time, it's almost unheard of that I cut more than two layers of fabric at a time. I don't because as you as you push the blade mm. then they all buckle yeah. and you're not going to get that clean no. edge and I would always say to use a rotary cutter and um, the ruler if you can. Mm. Cutting by hand like with my age but I do get a little bit shaky sometimes yeah. and it is that precision and you only have to be a millimetre out each time and then if you've sewn five things that's five mils that you're out so it's yes true. it's always if you can get it cut as precise as you possibly can and you can do your quarter of an inch seam allowance as precisely then you're you're halfway there perfect so I've cut my first one and you'll see on these squares that we have these triangles always upside down you see now that one is directional <laughs> um, they do say that this one is directional Stuart but mm. I can't find a direction to it no me neither um, but this one is directional yeah now we're going to just cut out I'm just going to cut some squares out I'll show you on this one here so I've cut these and then it will tell you whether to cut from here to here and here to here because what we now want is because, I'll show it on this one because I don't think the other one is directional, we want the trees all standing up the same way. We do. So that means that we have to cut, so that those two have been cut together yep. and those two have been cut together. Yep. So if, but in opposite directions. Exactly. So normally, if it was like plain fabric, we'd just layer two fabrics together yep. and cut them both and just turn them, but that would create um, a sort of mismatch on the direction of the trees. Yeah, and you can have your trees upside down if you want to, <laughs> um, but I like, I think that you've got that element there, so why not use it? And yeah, I'm not one that normally is too concerned about direction in fabric, but I think with something like trees, yeah. I really would want them all going. Yes. Out. And certainly when you look at the finished quilt, mm. there is something really lovely, isn't there, about the fact that all those trees are going up the same way. The animals are all curled up in different positions, so that absolutely doesn't mm. matter. Um, it's just that one with the trees. And you've got instructions to help you to cut it that It does actually fabric. tell you to cut the animals. It, it says go left to right. It tells you exactly how to cut them, but it also does tell you how to cut the animals directional. That's cool. I didn't because I don't think they are directional. No. Um, but definitely with the trees. And then what we need to do, you need to put a straight edge, so your ruler, and you want to place it in one corner 
and the other. Now, if you were drawing something, I would always say you take into consideration the thickness of your nib. Mm. But because we're cutting with a, a blade that is really, really fine, mm. you do. It, it is best to go from literally get that ruler from in. Corner to corner. If you're working, if you're drawing a line and it's too fat, then you pull it away slightly. But yep. with something like this, you don't. So I'm going to cut that that way. And now I've created. I'll move them out of the way. We've created that one and that one. Yep. And I'm going to get my other one and I'm going to cut this way. And I've turned it I've turned it now. So I, I've worked out which way I want sure. it. Sure. But I want to be cutting it away from me. I don't want to be cutting at an angle. So I've turned the fabric to be able to do that. But what you will see now is I've created my directional four corners. Perfect. And the okay. trees are all the right and way they're up. All it's up real. And, and actually I've done pretty well there with the, the placement yeah, of the have. little bears. You have. Julie messaged to say Wendy is so good at demonstrating because she's learning too mm. and isn't afraid of talking about her mistakes because we make them too and we absolutely do. We I did do. not make any mistakes this morning about the, the nosy beak did I? <laughs> We love but, you for but it. But that's it, you know, I think we're all like, oh, we can't make a mistake, but we do make mistakes. I've cut things out before and I've just thought, oh my gosh, I've cut it out completely the wrong size. That's this is works. the thing, slow and steady wins the race, Definitely. doesn't it? You know, enjoy. Uh, and I just encourage everyone, enjoy every part of the process. Don't see the cutting out as a chore. All the time you're cutting out that fabric, you're enjoying that beautiful fabric that you chose and that you're, you're, you're working with. Enjoy looking at it, enjoy ironing it. You know, enjoy seeing all the detail in your fabrics. Enjoy the precision mm -hmm. of getting everything square and true because you know, as you're cutting it, that this is now gonna be a pleasure to piece together because you're not gonna have to fudge or finish nagel or pull it's all going to fit together beautifully and that's a joy well it is and also um i've seen so many people start things and throw them to their their whip packet their whip parcel yep. they're, they're not going to make them anymore no. because it's gone wrong what a terrible waste it, it is a terrible such terrible a waste and this is such an easy project to be able to do that mm -hmm. now i created the smaller triangles in exactly the same way but it does tell you that on you cut both ways so you get your square and you cut it to create the four triangles mm -hmm. um, and then it's just a case of piecing it together now I've made one of each colorway so I know what I'm looking for now so I'm just going to grab those pieces that I need do you keep that block near you as you sort of model to follow the first one you've got them in the pattern so yeah, I do I have the pattern next to me but I promise you once you make one or even two you'll go yeah I know what I'm doing yeah so especially if you've got one of each colorway uh -huh. then you just pull those pieces that you need yeah and I have one just sat on the side so I can copy it so I'm gonna get the pieces that I need here now these ones aren't directional because they're just like amazing splodges it's that gorgeous bumbleberry it's, it's, isn't it it is gorgeous and I always always label my fabrics mm -hmm. always so the first thing what sorry I should have said the first thing you want to do is grab a cup of coffee get the pattern read it all the way through and then work out it tells you which one's which work out which fabric is which sure um, and would you cut out one colorway of blocks first piece those and then cut out or would you cut out I everything? cut everything out I, I'm one of these people that um, this project I could cut out the night before because it doesn't fray too bad but mm -hmm. anything that really frays you you literally want to be cutting out and then making Fair enough. you don't have to do that in this so I cut these all out one night and then the next day I made the the quilt but I did label everything Fair because enough. they've all got their names and it gets a little bit confusing it can um, I'm just I need four of those one two this is my favorite as well it's really lovely print that I, I love do it. like the trees and you'll see I have cut them out for a very good reason because I will be making this mm -hmm. I'm going to finish this yeah quilt. yeah it's a beautiful beautiful lap quilt throw quilt it would look great on the back of a sofa it's great to snuggle under but mm. it would also top a bed as well just as a little extra snuggly Nice in the back of the car as well oh, for long journeys. Oh, that's a good idea. It's just that perfect mm. size, it isn't is, it? It is, it is. It's terrific. And I'm going to do, I'm just selecting one of each orientation so mm -hmm. I know that I've got my square. What I'm going to do is, and I've never done this, so I'll let you know how I get on. I might be showing it, I might not be showing it. I'm going to try the quilt as you go. I've had a little masterclass from <laughs> Stuart. So he's told me what to do, so I'm going to do it. Well, my lovely friend Joan, Deputy Joan, is the real aficionado of Quilt As You Go. She's used Quilt As You Go many, oh. many times. Um, there are some really good tutorials online, actually, for Quilt As You Go. And it's just a great method for blocks that have sashing between them, or you could add sashing between. Um, 
for where you really don't want to have to quilt the whole quilt, you can just quilt one block at a time with your batting and your backing, quilt that whole block and then put the quilt together once it's quilted, if that makes sense. Um, it's a really useful method for a lot of people, especially if you, you know, don't like or can't handle the size, the weight, the manoeuvrability. Um, I love the fact that there are alternative methods which mean we can all keep quilting. I'm, I'm very humble I have this machine. I, I know that I'm so lucky. Every day I come down and give it a little smile because I know that I am so lucky having it. It's a dream. It just does everything I need it to mm -hmm. do. Um, but this one's manageable because I actually quilted the first block first, made sure everything was okay. Yeah. Um, and then I just moved out to the sides, kept repinning and, and it, it was a dream. And at the end of the day, this is a 48 inch square throw. So it isn't massive. You're only gonna, even to get to the middle of your quilt, you've only got to get 24 inches of quilt, um, which is the length of one of our usual, our rectangular rulers. Mm -hmm. So it's not a lot sort of pushed up inside your machine. So even on quite a small sewing machine, you should be able to fit. Now I just want to remind you that there are two options for this quilt. The one that Wendy's working with is the orange, and those details are on the left of your screen. The one that's hanging behind Wendy on the wall that has the darker border, we've called brown. And those details are on the right of your screen. Either option, you're getting uh, six different fabrics, which is enough for the quilt top and the binding. £54.99. I'm just going to show you those two bundles again. You've got two gorgeous, gorgeous ranges of fabric. This is the orange version and this is the one that Wendy's currently working on it's got that orange bumbleberries the warm sort of warm oak uh, wood the woodland the dark chocolate uh, little mini motif and that golden border so that's our orange option and then our brown version is this one right here, and this is the one that Wendy's working on. Have I said that the wrong way around? This is the orange. I'm really sorry, folks, I'm really sorry. This is the brown. This is the brown. This is the brown. Oh, I was right then. The other one was the orange. Sorry. Sometimes I can confuse myself. <laughs> if you've got any questions, get in touch. But both colourways, fifty-four ninety-nine. Back to you, Wendy. Brilliant. I've laid the square out, so I've laid the block out in the order. The only thing that I will say that this one is kind of orientational, but it doesn't matter at this time because this one doesn't have. A, a pattern to it, I can make it up and then choose where I want to put it. Fine. So the first thing we're going to do is, I'm just going to move these, and this is what I do at home, I have them where they need to be, and then I just start from the inside and work out. Mm -hmm. When you put this together, you want to put opposite sides first and deal with those, and then you can add the other two on after. Yep. We're going to place right sides together, so I get this and I place it on here, and what I want is to have the same amount peeping out one end that I do the other. Now, the, the more accurate you can get them here, the better it's going to be. It's like a little triangle dog ear, isn't it? It is. It is. It's, it's not a quarter of an inch at this moment because mm -hmm. the next one will be. And that will become obvious when I do the next one. Mm -hmm. This first one isn't. There is a little bit of wiggle room with them, but do try and be as accurate as you can. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pin it into place. Now, if I can just offer up a top tip at this point, Ooh. it would be this. If you fold your centre square and finger press the halfway points, okay, on all four, yeah. And then if you do exactly the same with your triangles and lightly finger press the court, the centres, then you can match the centre of the triangle and the centre of your square, and then you'll have an even amount hanging off either side. So on this side of the square, 
I have marked the center and the center. <laughs> that is a brilliant. I actually think it might say that in the instructions. It probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know you me. Know, it's an easy tip. That you can is do fantastic. It by eye as well, I've Wendy. done it. I've done it. Yeah. So I've the well, this will prove it now. So I've done one by eye and I've got my wrong glasses on again, so who knows where it'll go. And then the other one I've done exactly what you've done. I think if you are yes. doing it by eye, my tip would be flip it over yes, definitely. so that you've got the square on top and the triangle underneath and then you will see how much tip of triangle you've got at either either side if you've Absolutely. got the triangle on top you can't really see how much is hanging over so just but you do over. need to pin it first because as soon as you turn it over <laughs> to do it it all comes yeah, apart quite. a quarter inch <laughs> seam allowance throughout um, yes a quarter of an inch and that is crucial don't change your seam allowance and don't change your machine because they do differ from machine to machine as i found out and I'm sewing down one side and then I'm coming up and I'm taking it out and then I'm going to do the second side. And this just is these things that just add a little bit of speed. Yeah, so I'm yeah. doing two in one. Was it you that told me? I do listen. Mm. Do you finger press this part now and go from the centre out? Was it you that does I that? I do. You do? Yeah. I thought you did. Well, I, I started to seam. do that. I set my seam yes. at this point and then I finger press from I the centre out. I started to do that now. I do listen. <laughs> I do listen to you. Because at the end of the day, I have been sewing for, I'm not going to admit it because then people can work my age out. I've been sewing for a long time. Yeah. But even I'm learning things. Well, and you, you just think, wow. You learn things every day I'm here. a really good way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm and also from looking that. through like our um, Facebook friends group as well, I learn tips and ideas from there. Or see what other people are making. Aren't they an incredible group? Yeah, amazing. And you get like ideas for things like different colorways or little additions to mm. maybe a panel or a kit or something like that. It's terrific. <coughs> Excuse me. We're a great sewing community. It's really, really a strength, isn't it? And I love that we can all come together here on Sewing Street. I'm we all learn from I'm, each other. I, I, I'm learning your method now because I think this may be much easier for me. So I'm going to finger press that one and that one. So I'm yeah. doing, this is what, this is Stuart's little top tip. So I'm folding them in half and I'm finger pressing just to, at this point, I'm not making a really big crease to no, your point. Like you can't get it inch, out. Half an inch, that's all. It's, you just want to yes. be able to see where the centre is. And then the same on here. But mm -hmm. remember, you, you have to, you match the actual square up itself. That would have been easier for me to do that before, wouldn't it? On the main it? square, yeah. I should, have, I should have measured all my four centre points of the sides. I'm going to have fun making this when I get home because I'm going to take all your tips mm -hmm. and I'm going to, of course, as you go, so I will post we'll it when I've definitely have a look at that yes. method. You know, I mean, you, you quilted the whole quilt you know, perfectly easily with a walking foot. Mm -hmm. You could free motion quilt it, of course, as well, if you like free motion quilting. I'm trying, um, I'm trying. I keep saying, I, I'd practice, but I'm, you know, like, it's one thing that's your you bit practice, of your- When you practice, how do you practice? With my gloves. But I mean, what do you practice on? Uh, a sandwich. Yeah, so you like make a sandwich. I make a sandwich. Yeah. Calico, yeah, is that, that's, that's, that's right then. That's what I do. Okay, yeah. yeah. I make it as though that's what I would be doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, it's, I just... And what I would say is if you were going to free motion this quilt and you've got the block, what I would do is I would get some maybe dressmaker's tissue paper mm. and I would draw out the block or even trace the block, put a block underneath it and trace the block. So you've got the block at full size on your paper, okay? And then I would get... Uh, pencil and I would practice drawing whatever quilt pattern I wanted to free motion at full size on my paper pattern and I would trace over those lines again and you can audition different patterns that way can't you you can rub them out you can try again but once you've got your pattern draw and draw and draw and draw until it feels like second nature and don't turn the paper by ha hang on a minute by hand just with a pencil to, in, to imprint on the paper, it in your brain. To imprint it in your brain. Wow. Okay? And don't turn the paper because you're going to quilt this bit and then you're going to quilt this bit down, aren't you? So don't turn it. And then when you've done that, I would then get your calico or your plain fabric sandwich and I would again draw the block at yeah. full size on that calico block and then I would practice quilting that design on the calico sandwich because the one place you don't want to practice your quilting 
is mm. on your quilt. Mm -hmm. That's when you wanted, that's your final, check this out. It's a bit like Strictly, isn't it? We don't watch, we don't judge the dance on day one or day five. That's a very good, yeah. It's once good. they get on the dance floor. The quilt top is your dance floor to show off when you've practiced. Wow. I would suggest. It's just my tip. Wow. And what you're looking for is when you press that back, for that to be in continual line so you know that you've got it right. So I've done the second one and I did your method. So I found the center of all the sides and then the center of the triangle and matched them up. Cool. Oh, yes. And it worked. And it worked. Right. Um, now, I might be a little bit controversial here what I'm going to do next. You're, you're, we're making a block a certain size, but I trimmed them down at each stage. Is that something you would normally do? <laughs> When you say you trim them down? Yeah, so before I before I then put the next section on, uh -huh. I, I, it needs to be six and a half inches. Okay. So I made sure it was six and a half inches because you can see here, it's a little bit wibbly wobbly because mm -hmm. of my stitching or I may not have done that one as perfect as that one. Okay. So that's what I did. But is that something that you wouldn't normally do? Well, I suppose it depends. I mean, I would certainly trim off the dog ears. Right, yes, yeah. And well. I mean, the proof of the pudding, we look at your blocks, your mm. blocks are beautiful, <laughs> yes. and they're the right size. Because uh -huh. so they need to be 12 and a half inches when finished, mm -hmm. um, but they weren't quite square. When, oh, you can see that's not quite square. I that. And I did everything that I needed to do, mm. but um, maybe it's because I, you know, I'm not a quilter. <laughs> Well, I think most of us would admit <laughs> that <laughs> often our six and a half inch units are not quite six and a half inches. Yeah, so I just I'm always a little bit cautious about oh, trimming. Yes, that's why I wanted to ask you. Things start to get smaller, don't they? You know, if you need a twelve and a half inch finished block, um, if you start trimming bits off, and also if you don't trim off evenly, you can end up with. But see that sort of that's the thing here. I've mm -hmm. got my. Let me do my so six and a half. So this is brilliant. This one. My one at home doesn't have these. I want one of these for Christmas. Mm -hmm. This has actually got six and a half. Now when I place it here, you can see that it's peeping out a bit here and a bit there. Yeah. So it I wouldn't trim personally. <gasps> I wouldn't Ooh. because the thing is actually when you sew that together, yeah. and you know you don't if you wibble wobble very slightly, who knows if you're going to wibble wobble in the same places. So if you trim a bit off there, so now you've got less fabric. So right. Yeah. Even though I've trimmed it to six and a half. Yeah, I wouldn't to be honest. I just oh. yeah. Yes. I'd trim the dog ears off. Yes. And, you know, I'd always measure, but I mean, if you've got something, I mean, from where I'm sitting, Wendy, that <laughs> looks as close to a six and a half inch square <laughs> as I could ever hope <laughs> to get. So I'd be happy with that. <laughs> Tell her everyone at home. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing is, I think it's because, um, because it's not my first, you know, I, I, I make bags and I do home furnishings. Yeah. It's not my first port of call but I'm always very conscious that there are people go out there that it will be absolutely on point <coughs> and it'll be absolutely but I that is I've been doing about a year and a half now that is my best one I've ever done so I, I am getting better fabulous. so I've made this one and as you can see here it needs to be and that was fluke that little teddy bear was absolutely <laughs> fluke I didn't fussy cut that that's just how it was so this is now where you would need to be concerned about that inner picture okay um, I don't have to worry about these because they're like swatches. So I'm just going to choose. Mm. See, I think he's. I think it's nice that way round. I think that's lovely. So now we're going to do exactly the same as we did with the inner, and each of these add-ons are a repeat of the first one. Mm. That's how easy this is. Great. But again, we put the opposite to first. So I'm going to do your little trick. I wish I'd actually read the instructions. I think it does say that on there. But that is so easy, isn't it? It just takes that guesswork out, doesn't it? Well, you know, every designer, every maker has their own ways of doing things, mm -hmm. their own tips to share. Yeah. I mean, some people push a pin through and find the point so that oh, when right. they sew across, it's exactly right. You know, there's all sorts of different mm -hmm. ways. I mean, most of the time I work on the principle that if you cut accurately and yes. sew accurately, you, in many mm -hmm. instances, you should just be able to put the two pieces of fabric together, pin them and sew, and everything should turn out right. That's um, what I call my pop sack, the preparation of your project yeah. and your seam allowance consistency. And if you do both uh -huh. of those to the I best of that. 
to the best of your ability, yeah, though, yeah. Um, then you are going to get the results that I've got because um, it just takes but a little know, bit of time. But you know, I'd have that quilt on my lap. Okay, with my dinner on top mm. of it eating. And once I've slopped a bit of gravy about, <laughs> you know, those perfect points would be a thing of the past. So, you know, in the real world, if you want perfect, you can absolutely spend that time making it absolutely perfect. Yeah. I, you know, I'll settle for finished, cosy, <laughs> snug. Yeah, and it's over any it. day, yes. Yeah? Yeah. But it's beautiful. And there are two colourways to choose from. The orange or the brown. The brown version has the dark brown border and the orange one has the beautiful sort of lighter golden border and it has that beautiful orange bumbleberry that you can see there. Really lovely. Which one do you prefer? Do you love them both? They would make the most glorious sort of non-matching pair. What's your favourite? Which is my favourite? Mm. I, I can't decide. No, I can't. I really can't I decide. Can't. See, the thing is, the range of fabrics is gorgeous. <laughs> I and I love the way they've been put together. I'd be happy making Me. and keeping either of them. Me too. Can Me I just too. mention as well, we've got some backing fabrics. Because um, you will need a backing fabric for this project. Um, and we do sell some really lovely extra wide backing fabrics. And we've selected a few um, which would work very, very well. Uh, which one should you want to start with? The Yeah, the dots would be a good one because this is um, really, really suitable. This is uh, like a cream, extra wide dots, off-white, um, half a metre. Now it's 274 centimetres in width. Now I know the point of extra wide fabric is not to have to join it. But, you know, if you're making something smaller and you did want to buy, say, like just a metre and then cut it in half and join it, you could. Otherwise, you would need a metre and a half of this extra wide. OK, and that's in the dots. OK, so that's lovely. Now, we've got two Henry glass and I love both of these very much indeed. Should we go with the lighter? Uh, this is beautiful. They use a lot of Henry glass backing fabrics. How lovely is that? It's like a paisley on a little micro dot background. Really, really lovely that one. And it's got a lovely kind of rich tea dye kind of look. And then these are little tiny dots. There's like a deep umber there's like a really deep uh, brown, a gold, a green, and I think possibly a blue without finding the registration marks at the side. I couldn't tell you for sure, but it's really, really lovely. That's the one you used to back the quilt, isn't it? It That's certainly is. That's on the back is. of this, look there. It certainly isn't is. Isn't that lovely? It looks gorgeous. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And you know, I always say, use beautiful fabric on the back of your quilt, because when you're snuggled under it, that's the bit you'll see as well and feel against your skin. Pure cotton, of course. Again, a metre and a half. And then finally, this one, which is more dark and brooding. I love this one. I'm going to be buying some of this and some of the other Henry Glass one for sure. This is lovely. This has got a deep or almost like a khaki. I do love how Americans say khaki. They always <laughs> say khaki, <laughs> uh, which I, I love. And also macrame. Do they say that? Is that Rather what they than say? Yeah, do they say that? They say macrame. Oh. I was doing a talk once for a group of visiting quilters from the States in Bath, and we were having a lovely time, and I talked to them about the time when I was a child. I made macrame, and the entire audience, about 90 people, all shouted, It's macrame! <laughs> macrame it is! And applique, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say potato, potato I say yeah. I'll have chips instead. <laughs> Me too. Me that too. is gorgeous. Again, a metre and a half of that is going to give you plenty. But if you didn't mind a join, you could get you could get a metre. 
In fact, you could get half a metre and piece it together and that would work too. It's whatever works. It's a really, really affordable way of backing quilts though. Now we've got a message from Jan. Buy both kits, one for each side oh. of a sofa, each sofa, or make a mega bed quilt. You absolutely could, that is a super idea, Jan. That's you a great absolutely idea. could do that, couldn't you? Because you could. you've got nine and nine, eighteen. Mm. I reckon with the scraps that you've got left over, you could probably make two extra blocks mm -hmm. and then have four by five, mm -hmm. 20 blocks. I mean, I'm not saying you could definitely, but I'd certainly be prepared to give it a go. Mm -hmm. Great idea, Jan. Yeah. And I agree with you. I can't choose between them. I think they're both beautiful. Where are we at? Right, so we now. Wendy now Orlando. And, oh, and this is, the, <laughs> this is now the, the one that you do need to take into consideration your, right. your fabrics because we want to make sure that the trees are all standing the right way. And I want my little man to be, yeah, I like him that way. I yep. like him that way. So that's when you would then consider what, where you want that one. So whatever else you're doing, this is the point at which you stop, you lay your block out, you assess, you stand back, you take a little photograph, you slurp a coffee, whatever you need to do before you proceed. Absolutely. And it, I mean, it, it may be that you'll find that there is an animal in a, a prominent place on every square, or it may be that you don't have any in any of the sure. places, but don't, don't get too het up about it, but it's these ones that we need to concentrate on the trees. So you, you must keep these ones in order. So we're going to place those that side and that side. And this is how easy this block is because it is it is a repetition of the rounds mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. But it, it looks a lot more complicated than it is, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks much more complicated. Yeah, it's just cutting those triangles in order, in order labeling yes. them. And I love the tip about cutting in one direction on some and in the opposite mm. direction in others so that you can then get all the motifs the right way up. That's a great tip that you can use for all sorts of things, isn't it? Um, oh, yes. What about things yeah. like striped fabric, if you're using that for an economy block or a square and a square again? You might, there might be times where you want stripe, stripe, stripe. You might want that mm. and then you can plan that out too. And if you cut four of each, then you're always going to have the orientation. So it's, it is a wonderful thing. I love, I, I love the fact that I did have to think about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whizzing along, whizzing along. Oh, it's, it's a it's speedy <laughs> machine, isn't it? Uh, uh, you just reminded me of, um, was it um, the the bed knob and broomsticks where they're bobbing along under the beautiful... Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah. just reminded me of that. I don't know why. It's such a lovely book, too. Oh, I've not read it. I've only seen... But seemed... the book is called Bed Knob and Broomsticks. Not... Not... No. Not plural. It's, it's Bed Knob and Broomstick. Because it is just one, isn't mm. it? Because he, doesn't he put it on the bed to twist, twist. it to make it move? Yeah, yeah, she kind of enchants the it bed does. knob. So it is, isn't but yeah, it? Yeah, the book is called Bed Knob and Broomstick. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it's lovely. I it's just love anything worth. that's got a song in it. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the old <laughs> Disney films too. Oh, I don't know how many Christmas films I've watched already. Yeah. One of my favourite set of books actually is uh, Mary Poppins. <gasps> I didn't oh. mind the film, you know, the original. I love Julie Andrews, of course. You didn't mind Dick it. Van it's Dyke, one of my favourites. Worst favorites. Cockney accent in the world. Oh, what Mary Poppins! <laughs> that's got to be the corniest Cockney accent. Oh, it ever, has, isn't it? Mine just then. <laughs> Have you watched the, 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 the second one? No, I haven't oh, you've watched got to. the modern. You absolutely lovely. have to. I bet it it's is amazing. Um, yeah. At first you think, oh, I don't like those songs, and then you just find yourself singing them all the time. I enjoyed the books, but they're quite uh, dark. They're dark. Were they? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Now, we've had a question yes. from Nikki. Morning to you both. Have you demonstrated the dark blue quilt behind Stuart? I love it. Now. Good question. Oh. Good question. That's this one here. It does look blue, doesn't it? This is like a sort of slaty grey almost. Um, Alison Glass fabric. It's like an art panel and some solids. Um, this is actually, it's actually part of a giveaway because what we've got happening today, because this is the eighth day of uh, Christmas, it isn't really, is it? It's the eighth day of December, but um, I'll go with the flow. We're giving away some studio makes. Now, one, one of you who shops today will win all of this. So you're winning the Alison Glass quilt. You're winning that quilt top, the green and, and red and white. It's a top that you can layer and quilt. You're winning the circular cushion, 
There's a couple of flannel gnome themed cushions, covers, and there's also a Highland cow made by Delphine. Um, one person's going to win all of that. So basically, everyone's name is going to go into a hat. I don't think it's a real hat. I think it might be computer generated. I don't know. There might actually be a top hat out the back with bits of paper in. But everybody's name will go in. One of you will win all of those makes. We, um, we I suppose, we, we must have a demonstration uh, of that quilt, but it will be a while ago now. Um, Hello, Stuart and Wendy. Now, the ampersand's working now, come on. Which colourway is Wendy demonstrating, please? Wendy is demonstrating the orange colourway. Now, I'm just going to grab that and show you. Details are on screen, HG6682. That is your deep orange bumbleberry. Okay, well, I've got right here. You've got your warm, kind of honey-coloured wood. You've got your light background, uh, cream background forest with the animals. You've got your light background sleeping animals, the dark chocolate brown scattered sort of elements. And then you've got that wonderful, rich gold border. This is what your finished quilt's going to look like. Now, the alternative, so this is the one that Wendy's working on, the orange. The brown colourway, I'm just going to grab looks like this. This is the one that's hanging behind Wendy and this is the brown colourway. Those are the fabrics that you get instead. They're all gorgeous. Have you sewn that block up in that time? I have. Amazing. It's finished. It's Amazing. finished. So that's how you make the block. Perfect timing because we've got a minute left. It is, but then you just put the blocks together with your sashing. And how amazing. Now, yeah. what I will do is when I get home tonight, I will just conk out. But sometime throughout this week, I will make this Brilliant. as a quilt as you go. Will you pop pictures on I and will. show us? Maybe I will. show us the process of quilt as you go. What a Maybe good idea. Maybe next time you come along, it might, the project idea. might lend itself. That'd what a ace. good idea. I will do that. I will well, something film. for the future for sure. Wendy, yes. have a few minutes break because you are staying with us. I so am, yes. Take a breather. Have a slurp of that coffee. <laughs> And uh, we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. We're going to go for a break in a few minutes. I want to just go through the menu for Sewing Street before we leave Sewing Street and go to Yarn Lane. So here's our menu for tomorrow. Now we've got a brand new Liberty. What is it, a Liberty? A Liberty Collection, thank you. We've got a Liberty collection. So here's the menu for tomorrow. It's the Liberty Artist Home Collection fabric launch at 8 a.m. At 9 a.m. we've got Rebecca Harrison's here. Love Rebecca. And she is showing the Sussex Seamstress dresses. Now at 10 a.m. it's sewing room tools. And then at 11 it's the Liberty Ladies Alexa frill dress with Rebecca Harrison. At 12 p.m. it's Gary from Juki with Juki sewing machines. So a really packed morning. So that's going to be with John Scott, 8 o'clock tomorrow. Make sure you join him. Now we're heading over to Yarn Lane now. So if you're watching on TV, you don't have to do anything. If you're watching on our Facebook page, just flip over to Yarn Lane and we will see you in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> 